time, but I feel like our hearts were connected. And I would always think about him, subhanAllah. And I feel like on a certain level, our souls were connected and they felt that companionship. And so what I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, uh, my dua right now is just as our hearts were connected in this life and our souls were felt connected to one another, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our souls to be connected to one another in Jannah. And so I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite us uh, in Jannah. And I've, I've been very sad these last couple of days, subhanAllah. Um, but one of the things that has brought me solace is continually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow me to see him uh, in Jannah and to be with him, to hang out with him, to chill with him in Jannah. Because that's that's what I know that, you know, what he would want as well. Just to just to hang out in Jannah, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Zakumla khair. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you that she saw and all of us. Jazakumla khair. And you know, one of the ongoing themes we keep hearing, which is so beautiful, um, is that Sheikh Muhammad was just so focused on his mission. Um, even with the naysayers, even with criticisms, like subhanAllah, it didn't shake him from what he was trying to build. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to really hold on to that um, from his legacy. So inshallah, and, uh, next we have Sheikh Navid Aziz, who also shared a few words the other day that I know I really found a lot of comfort in and just hearing his stories and experiences. Um, Sheikh Navid was also, alhamdulillah, is also an instructor with Al Maghrib and worked closely with Sheikh Hamid over the years. So um, Jazakallah Khair for being here with, here with us, Sheikh Navid. And, um, you know, looking forward to she- seeing Sheikh Mohammed through your eyes and the experiences that you had. Jazakallah Khair, Razia. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, so we're just taking a second, uh, Sheikh Navid, for your video to come on. So- sure. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Razia, am I good to go? Yep, you're good. Okay, Bismillah. Um, you know, it's uh, phenomenal, subhanAllah, in uh, this incident. There's so many thoughts that you want to share, but how do you filter that out? out? So I want to start off with sharing a, a genuine thought, a reoccurring theme that perhaps we haven't paid attention to, <clears throat> which is the fact that, subhanAllah, so many people have been able to mention what Sheikh Muhammad has done for them. And I want us to think about how many people have stories about things that they've done for Sheikh Muhammad. How many people have stories about things that they've done for Sheikh Muhammad. And for me, that is a beautiful lesson. Because if you look at the tarbiyah that the Prophet wasallam gave to the likes of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, telling him that even if you're whip was to fall off your horse before you ask someone to pick it up, pick it up yourself. Do things for yourself, rely upon Allah and create for yourself. I remember recently I watched his uh, interview with uh, Muhammad Arshad and he was talking about how growing up in Winnipeg, he was the uh, only colored kid named Muhammad and the teacher mentioned that Muhammad was the most, po- most popular name in the world and the kids started making fun of him like there's only one of him in the whole entire city probably. And he said, I had to create my own space fitting in because that's what my childhood was like, subhanAllah. And that motivation, like as a young kid of creating space for himself was just phenomenal, which leads me to point number two, was that for those of you that attended his classes, he always said, don't aim to be the best, but aim to be from amongst the best. Initially, when you're talking about leadership, this doesn't make sense. Like leadership is about being the best, right? But he said, when you aim to be from amongst the best, you raise everyone to that level. You raise everyone to that level. And while leadership generally is a lonely position, when you aim to be amongst the best, you surround yourself with successful, like-minded people. And in this case, people that will remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's amazing that, you know, he understood that before he even articulated it. Because if you look at the stories of Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, Sheikh Yasir Qadi, Sheikh Yasir Burjas, in Medina, while he's a student, like a young kid, he's like, will you come and teach at my institute? What institute? It hasn't established yet. But he knew that he wanted these people around him because he, like, the Ummah is not a one-man show, right? It's not a one-man show. It's a, it's a conglomerate. It's a collective. And he knew that, subhanAllah. The third thing I wanted to share with you was uh, Sheikh Ammar called me. Um, I, I believe it was the same day when Sheikh Mohammed passed away, just to uh, convey condolences and to talk. 
um, which I really appreciated. And I'm like, Sheikh Ahmad, we need to do this Sadaqah Jariya for Sheikh Muhammad. And he's like, what are you talking about? He literally laughed. I think that was the first time, you know, he laughed in the whole conversation. It was a very serious conversation. And he just laughed. He's like, what are you talking about? Al-Maghrib is his Sadaqah Jariya. And I'm like, I get that. And it's not just about benefiting the deceased. It's about those that he has left behind feeling as if they're able to contribute, feeling as if they could do something for him because everyone wants to be able to do something for Sheikh Muhammad because he's done so much for us, subhanAllah. But when I think about this, I, I, I can't help but think about the hadith that talks about, you know, Ikra waratil kama kunta turatilu fid dunya. That the Sadaqa Jariya, Al Maghrib is his Sadaqa Jariya. We are all his Sadaqa Jariya. The instructors are his Sadaqa Jariya. His kids are his Sadaqa Jariya. Like it's there. I, I, that's not the issue. The issue is from our side. We want to feel as if we can give back. And I think the best thing that we can do to give back is all the lessons that we've learned, implement them in our lives, care for the Ummah sincerely and genuinely. And that is, you know, the, the way that we honor who he was and we increase his, his hasanat by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But going back to my point was, the envisioning that I have, and for those of you that have seen the, the picture that I shared on Facebook where he's standing like this after we won charades uh, in Manchester, you know, that celebration, like that's the vision I have of him at the gates of Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, you know, enter from the gate that you want. And he's celebrating. And as he enters, he's told, Ikra waratil kama kunta turatilu fi dunya. Read and recite like you used to read, read and recite in this world. And I love Sheikh Yahya for this, that he's been sharing all these Quran recitation videos from the tour that they did in uh, Azerbaijan, that every masjid he's going to, he's just reciting Quran. And I just envision that, that the ranks are re being raised as he's reciting that Quran. So, bidhanahi ta'ala, I have no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be merciful and compassionate to him. And will take care of him better than any one of us could have or could have would have even wanted to. And this is what, you know, I, the point I want to conclude with is that if we want to rationalize our emotions, which I think is very important to do, because you can't just grieve in emptiness forever. Like Islam does not encourage grieving in emptiness, meaning that you just feel sad and you don't do anything about it. The point of that grief is to channel it, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to turn to Allah and to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like Sheikh Muhammad used to teach us. But when we rationalize these emotions, there is grief at the loss of Sheikh Muhammad, a teacher, a friend, a mentor, a, a close confidant, a companion. All of that is there. And then on top of that, there's a layer of fear that perhaps we're not able to... To pinpoint what is that fear that who is going to replace Sheikh Muhammad? How is the Dawah going to continue? How is the Maghrib going to continue? How is discovery going to continue? Who is going to be there to advise me? Who's going to be there to guide me? But at the end of the day, just like Sheikh Muhammad used to teach us, you have to have tawakkul in Allah. This is the deen of Allah, this is the khalq of Allah. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was always in control, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Sheikh Muhammad as a conduit to give us this nasiha, but it is the deen of Allah, it is the khalq of Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that will continue to provide and take care and protect this deen and continue this deen and spread this deen and allow this deen to thrive and allow it to reach the east and the west every household and that is what we have to keep remembering that is what we have to keep remembering so as we rationalize our emotions grieve but also put your trust in allah that just like the ummah survived the death of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and thrived thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send his help and will send his victory as well and Allah knows best. Jazakumullah khair for allowing me to share. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Nabit, for being on with us and, you know, Sukhan, you and so many of the instructors being so vulnerable, sharing, um, you know, your emotions and grief is, I know, helping a lot of the students who are coping, who are going through this and, and feeling like, you know, Alhamdulillah, we're, we're in this together and we're healing. And Sheikh Muhammad meant so much to all of us. And Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, that we're getting to have these little windows and glimpses into him. Um, so, inshallah, next we're going to have uh, Ustada. For being here with us and, and sharing a few words. Jazakallah uh, khairan for hosting this uh, very um, beautiful program. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, everyone. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. 
The Prophet ﷺ said that أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ That the most beloved of people to Allah is the one who is the most beneficial to people. And we can see how much everyone is expressing their love for Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. And in another hadith, we learned that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, he puts love and acceptance for that person in the hearts of people. And this is what we are witnessing, how much people are expressing their love for Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. And there is reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves people. And of the reasons is when a person becomes a source of great benefit for others. And from the stories that you are, you know, that we are listening to, we can see how so many people benefited from Sheikh Muhammad in big ways, in small ways. Um, there is no interaction that you could have with Sheikh Muhammad except that you benefited from him in, in one way or another. And as a woman, I can say that Sheikh Muhammad did a lot, a lot for us, uh, for, for, for women. He first and foremost provided us the opportunity to study our religion in ways that were not available, uh, in ways that uh, it was never done before. I remember uh, attending Al-Maghrib classes, you know, right at the beginning uh, here in Canada. And I remember people would criticize a lot that why are there men and women in one room? And I could never understand that why is this a problem? You know, finally we're getting to see the person who is teaching us because typically in a masjid setting, you know, women would be, uh, you know, in behind a wall where you don't even get to see who is talking. And if you have a question or, you know, you want some kind of clarification, there's no way that you could have access to the, the scholar. Sheikh Muhammad provided us women the opportunity to study directly from people of knowledge. And he benefited us in many different ways. I remember sitting through so many of his classes where he never ever spoke in a condescending way to women or about women. Um, he was never ever disrespectful towards women. Um, he always gave us advice in the most honest and respectful way. You could approach him, you could ask him personal questions, you could ask him, you could show him the work that you had done. He would read through it and he would give you honest feedback in the most respectful way. And uh, he basically provided us access to scholars. He, he set that trend, I believe, in North America. And not only that, he also supported female-led organizations. Um, my parents founded Al Huda International, and when they started here in Canada, Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif is the one who gave us, you know, full-out support in so many different ways, from you know organizing fundraisers to, you know, um, coming to our institute so many times speaking to the students, teaching us different things, providing us special access to all Al-Maghrib classes. Um, SubhanAllah, there is so much that he did, uh, you know, to support women, uh, he, but from providing us access to Islamic education, to uh, access to scholars, to supporting female-led organizations, and then uh, also uh, I, I have to say this, giving me the opportunity to join Al-Maghrib. This is something that I could never, ever, ever have imagined. Never. Um, but subhanAllah, uh, you know, Sheikh Muhammad was always ahead of his years, as as you've been uh, listening to. Uh, he, he had a vision, uh, and he wanted the best for the ummah. He was truly a nation builder. Uh, and, uh, and, and I feel like he benefited women in ways that many other people have not been able to. The Prophet ﷺ said that مَن لَمْ يَشْكُرِ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَشْكُرِ اللَّهِ And I testify that 
Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif uh, definitely benefit us, and I'm very grateful to him. I'm very grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal for um, for uh, uh, for giving us the opportunity to benefit from Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept all of his efforts. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept all of his services for his Deen. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala count us among uh, count him among uh, the Salihin and and join him with with the best uh, of the best. I mean, Jazakumullahu Khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikum assalam. Jazakumullahu Khairan, Sada. And I I really appreciate you sharing that message because you're absolutely right. Um, you know, Sheikh Mohammed made women not feel like an afterthought when it came to our Islamic. Um, learning our journey and knowledge and in the classes and the way that alhamdulillah you know women were always given the opportunity to have their own q a time the respect um that was always given and the spaces that were provided even i know for mothers mashallah he would make sure there was a room for mothers um with babies so they could still attend the classes and you know alhamdulillah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for setting that kind of standard and precedence alhamdulillah jazakallah khair and now we inshallah we have sheikh yahya ibrahim who I know I've been closely following the beautiful videos you've been sharing, Jazakallah Khair Sheikh, for you know, allowing us to share those special moments. Allahi barak feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Ali, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Rahman al-Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Malik al-Quddus al-Salam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Barr al-Tawwab al-Rahim to send his mercy, his light, upon my dear brother, Habibi Muhammad, rahmatullahi alayhi. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has allowed us these few minutes to come in together to celebrate um, the beautiful life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to continue to do what I know my brother Muhammad he was sitting in my chair today and celebrating one of our lives, which is that he would want us to rechannel and refocus our attention to the precious few moments, few hours, few days, weeks, months, or even years that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has still provided for us. There are so many things that I would love to share uh, about Muhammad, uh, Muhammad and his love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his love for the Quran, his love for his family, his love for his children. There are so many things that I would love to share um, that maybe are not what others have experienced with him. But I wanted to confine myself in these two or three minutes to a particular hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said that you leave, we leave this worldly life in only one of two conditions. That you are mustarih or mustarahun min. That at the moment of your death, you are given relief and you are made content or that the world that you leave behind is relieved at your departure and it's made more content because you are no longer upon it. All of us are a testimony. Men, women, young, old, Muslim and non-Muslim to the impactful life that our brother Muhammad had in our own lives. And there is not a single person, Wallahi la ilaha ghayru. In my heart, I do not believe that there is a single person who has a claim that can say, Alhamdulillah, he's gone from this earth. Rather, everybody, 
near and far. Wallahi, I had a call from people in Japan. I was like, Japan? They said, Sheikh, we just wanted you, if you know the family, just express to us how much appreciation we have for Sheikh Muhammad, for what he did. Wallahi, yesterday, one of the you know, project managers in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, I know even you, Sheikh Yahya, you're unaware. But he had reached out to me, reached out to the administration of the masjid, offered us support in these very technical things, in how we marketed something, in how we changed this translation. He noticed it in one of his uh, one of his days, and he said, no, no, this is not the way you should write this. Just the the amount of people, the random amount of people who have been benefited by him, who count him as being someone, whether they knowingly or unknowingly depended on him, is phenomenal. And there's nobody, subhanAllah, that is taking any comfort in his departure from us, in his ascension into the gateways of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open them wide for him. As a part of our belief that we are testifiers, we are shuhada'ullahu fil ard. We testify that this is a man of Jannah, a man who taught people how to live a marital life until Jannah, who always focused on putting tawakkul upon Allah, who never feared for his family. Wallah, he would say, you know, Yahya, I've taught people about Islam. I've wanted people to know about Islam. I don't fear for my family, whether I'm here or not here. Allah will send them those who will look after them. You and I, we are just tools for our family. That if we are dropped, another tool will be picked up. Somebody else will be in our place. And this is, you know, subhanAllah, it gives me so much comfort, so much joy in my heart. The final thought is that my dear brother is one who I believe is not just simply detached from uh, the experiences that we have. And I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us about those who have a sudden death. The Prophet ﷺ says, you know, um, uh, the, the mount of al-fajah, it's something that was just sudden. That these are all things that are a way of Allah cleansing our behaviors, cleansing our sins. And once again, Allah using our brother Muhammad as da'wah to us. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to maintain his legacy to teach in his place and to have those who are prepared to teach in our place when we are no longer with you. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows him who was from a sabiqoon, you know, he was a, for, a forerunner, uh, an innovator, one who walked forward and blessed us with so many wonderful things that as he stepped ahead of us in his pathway to Jannah, that it's just a day. Wallahi innaha sa'a. It's but an hour that we have. So let us be pleasing to Allah Azza wa Jal. Let us allow ourselves the dignity of catching up to those who have preceded us upon a path of, of love. It's where you understand the, the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu May Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala grant him the rahmah that we expect of him, the maghfirah that we expect of Allah for Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow the gateways of Jannah, all, all of them to be open for Muhammad, the one who fasted and recited the Qur'an, the one who taught the kalima, the one who led people in prayer, in taraweeh, in nafl, the one who honored and led hujjaj 20 plus years, 20 years of hajj after hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it all reason. For him to be fi illiyin, ma'an nabiyina, wa siddiqina, wa shuhada'i wa salihin. A final sentence to the family of my dear brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to allow you to carry on the tradition of my dear brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you from what you know you need protection from. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala turn hearts towards you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uplift you and assist you and help you and aid you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surround you with those who have a genuineness and a purity of heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you the great honor and the dignity of maintaining the blessedness and legacy of your father, of your husband.
for many years um, with our assistance. I mean, اللهم وسلم وزد وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم اغفر له وارحم وعافه واعف عنه وأكرم نزله ووسع مدخله اللهم ارزقه دارا خير من داره وأهلا خير من أهله اللهم اجمعه مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين واجمعنا معهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا اللهم اهدنا إلى سواء السبيل اللهم اهدنا يا أرحم الراحمين واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهددا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Amin. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Rahia. Amin. 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 Uh, so inshallah, next we'll go to Dr. Omar, who's one of the more, um, one of the newest instructors at Al-Maqib. Uh, so inshallah, Dr. Omar, please share a few words of your memories of Shaykh Muhammad and some reflections. Just wait a second. Um, I think we're just, the system's just a little late. Alhamdulillah, many of you just sharing in the chat how much um, you're finding comfort through hearing the stories, the reminders, and obviously um, the du'as, being able to say them together, alhamdulillah. Go ahead, Dr. Omar. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa bihi nasta'een wa ba'd. Um, so, so first of all, you know, as you had mentioned, um, me being a sort of a newer instructor, um, so... I think it's just a little different angle. There's so much, so many beautiful years of friendship and stories that we've been hearing. Um, I, so I just, I just want to mention from the outset, perhaps it's the counselor in me, but uh, there's a lot of instructors who have very deep ties for many years uh, with Sheikh Muhammad Rahimahullah. So if they're in your community, you know, just reach out to them, ask them how they're doing. Um, tell them, you know, you're, you're making dua for Sheikh Muhammad. Sometimes those on the front line, uh, you know, it, it's just a lot to take in. And while everyone is grieving, sometimes we forget about them. Um, so just, just reach out, inshallah. It's something simple. Uh, can go a long way. Um, as someone <clears throat> who never actually met Sheikh Muhammad, um, one of the few instructors for you know, maybe logistic reason, logistical reasons or whatever, that doesn't mean that there wasn't uh, some sort of impact. I'll share one story. Uh, when I was listening to a, 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 it was, I think it was a podcast or an interview uh, a few years back, and uh, they were talking about how al maghrib formed, uh, the formation of the institution. And, you know, Sheikh Muhammad, mashallah, he always has things going on and uh, while he was the founder of Al-Maghrib, the, the, you know, sort of the day-to-day -day operations and a lot of those things, you know, from my understanding, was kind of moved on to, to other folks, right? He may certainly have been in an advisory position or role, but he wasn't sort of the, the head person. And the interviewer asked, you know, he started this thing which really was revolutionary, which was pioneering in the Islamic da'wah field, and he's not really in the day-to-days anymore like he's not you know coming in there he's not there but he's sort of there you know it's founder syndrome sometimes we hear about um when people who build something um and they just can't seem to let others come in and thrive and i i can't forget that the uh the speaker was saying like it didn't even cross his mind he's like there has been none of that that's just not how he operates he saw it as, you know, he, he started this, he did what he did with it, and then it's time for others to come. And alhamdulillah, the institution still going strong, still growing. And this is just a testament to the kind of person that Sheikh Muhammad was. Um, for many people, he was really their first introduction to a English-speaking, Islamically educated scholar. Uh, one of those people was my wife. Uh, she remembers listening to him she said she, he was really the first one uh which and he was just captivating and afterwards she went up to him and asked him advice on hifz of quran memorizing quran which alhamdulillah she was able to do and she said he was he gave advice but more than that he was attentive and gave advice it wasn't like some sort of 
generic prepared script, right? Like reminds me of the, the Maya Angelou saying, people don't remember uh, what you tell them, but they'll remember uh, how you made them feel, right? Something along those lines. Um, so, you know, uh, it certainly is, uh, is very sad. You know, the day seemed off uh, first hearing about that. But Alhamdulillah, we are Muslims. We have a life beyond this and seeing so many people speak so well of him, inshallah, this is a good sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts his deeds um, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites us all in Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give patience to the family and for the general community out there, of course, making dua for him. But if there's something we can go beyond that with, with other needs for the family, um, maybe those who are local or in, in other ways as well, I think. That is the least we can do. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept Sheikh Muhammad's efforts, have mercy on his soul, and give patience to his family. Jazakumullah khair. Ameen. Jazakumullah khair, Dr. Omar. Um, alhamdulillah, in the past couple of days, um, Sheikh Yasser Burjaz has been sharing some beautiful reflections, I know, online at his local community. And Sheikh Yasser is also someone who has known uh, Sheikh Muhammad for very long and has a history so I definitely you know, have been enjoying the little stories the insights Sheikh Yasser some of the you, you brought a smile to many of our faces with some of the inside jokes that you had so we're looking forward to you know getting a little bit more of that inshallah Jazakallah khair Jazakallah khair Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Baraka Anabiyyana Muhammadin Wa Ala Ali Wa Sahbihi Wa Sallam Tasleeman Kathiratun Ma Ma Ba'd Honestly, uh, um, I, I thought I was done uh, with crying uh, for the past two days. And Alhamdulillah, after having some uh, uh, therapeutic sessions with some of the old timers of Al Maghrib here in Dallas, we got together, we spoke about him, we just started sharing all these beautiful stories. We laughed, we cried. Uh, then we had a beautiful session last night at Valley Ranch Islamic Center dedicated to, uh, um, to Sheikh Muhammad's legacy. And SubhanAllah, the message was full. Uh, people even they came from uh, different places and different cities as well. Uh, it was it was such a uh, such a beautiful testimony for the goodness of Sheikh Muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And uh, again, subhanAllah, it, it keeps, uh, I thought again I was done with the crying thing, but then hearing Sheikh uh, Naver speak and then crying and I started crying again, I said like, oh my God, Allah musta'an, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, shower him with his mercy and, and, and uh, accept his, uh, the best of his deeds, ya rabbil alameen. And every time I think that, that subhanAllah khalas, yeah, we, we get to know, we have seen everything that Sheikh Muhammad was doing. Um, and then uh, you get this message and this email and this, uh, uh, um, you know, random person comes talk to you about it. And until this time, I still getting these messages and random these messages showing you more of Sheikh Muhammad. Uh, and I don't know, I'm going to share, I'm going to share a comment I got actually on Facebook, subhanAllah, that I'm not really sure if anyone knows about this private uh, and an act of charity from Sheikh Muhammad Rahmatullah. So this brother, without mentioning his name, actually he posted on, on uh, a comment on my uh, um, on something I posted about Sheikh Muhammad. And we were colleagues uh, together in Medina. He was also a student uh, of uh, al Jamal al-Islamiyya at the time. So he says, uh, he says uh, one day, uh, because they were living outside in, uh, uh, outside of the dome in their house, they were married, so they were living actually in different places. He goes, I came to Sheikh Muhammad and I was kind of like so disturbed and so kind of like in a difficult situation because uh, I didn't have enough money. And that that time, the students of Medina, they didn't really have much really to, to survive on. He says, I didn't have enough money and I was behind on my rent and I'm about to be evicted. So I was kind of talking to Sheikh Muhammad about this. And he said, see, he did not even actually hesitate. He went straight to his house and he took the gold out of his wife's hands. And he sold it and he said he said paid for my rent for the whole year i i just read this and i'm just like oh, subhanallah. Wallah, you made it so difficult and hard for everybody who comes after you uh, to to try to match you or even to come close to what you've been doing you know in public and in private and, and with, with people that you know and you don't know it is it is so much to to match allah mustan May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from him and, 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 and reward him for his kindness and goodness, ya Rabbil Alameen. I personally, my, my relationship with Sheikh Muhammad began obviously when we were in Medina and I was, uh, um, I was uh, the, uh, uh, the senior student over there. I was uh, the valedictorian. And I noticed later on, I started, as I started knowing Sheikh Muhammad later in life, subhanAllah, is that he is truly a man, he's a leader who gravitates towards leaders and gravitates leaders around him. 
he is looking for success in his life and looking for success stories from people around him and looking for successful people he wants to learn how this works and that's why i believe subhanallah how he, he came try to get to know me i mean i was a he for me he was a, like a random kid really coming from a, from canada from a different country like who are you even but subhanallah we have this bond afterwards and uh, la ilaha illallah and uh, uh, alhamdulillah i was able to help him um, overcome some of the difficulties of learning in medina so i taught him reassure him the path to seek knowledge and uh, um, but when i came to the us over here subhanallah i believe he uh, took me under his arm and he taught me how to deliver that knowledge like i gave him that knowledge and he's now teaching me how to deliver the knowledge in the way the most effective way and definitely it was a blessing that alhamdulillah i'm grateful for one of the things Sheikh Muhammad uh, um, he, he taught me early early on, he says, look, when it comes to knowledge, and that's his philosophy, he says, when it comes to knowledge, knowledge is happiness. Because don't you see when you teach somebody something new and all of a sudden they react to it, it, it unintentionally they react with a smile. When you teach somebody something, they smile because they feel happy. They feel empowered because knowledge is happiness. And he was wondering why people, when they go to these halaqat and these classes in the masajid, they're just so exhausted, so fatigued, so tired, and they're grumpy. They don't like, you know, happy what they're learning. He wanted to change that. He wanted to see people enjoy learning. And I believe he did. He changed the, the face of history for learning and taking education, uh, Islamic education in the West. Yesterday, I was speaking, subhanAllah, to my community as well. And I was saying that Muhammad, for me, rahmatullahi ta'ala, he really he brought knowledge he's just like the ford of knowledge in our time he brought knowledge to the average person he made the average person study tafsir study usul study aqidah study sirah study thing that once it was thought to be an elitist society only that can really learn that you have to be a student of knowledge in order for you to start to understand this kind of thing and so forth but he wanted to make it so simple to the average muslim brother and sister man and woman young and adult just to be able to be part of this great legacy of Islam and making knowledge part of your life. You know, he wants you to be happy and knowledge definitely brought happiness to many, 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 many people. SubhanAllah, the stories we've been listening and sharing, you know, with others is just like unbelievable. Everybody was just excited about the fact that you were just so happy to be part of this legacy and part of this knowledge and ilm that he was spreading, alhamdulillah. Sheikh Muhammad, for me, he, um, he wasn't a dreamer, really. He was a visionary. Because I remember when we first sat together, and uh, that's part of the history of Al Maghrib. One day, hopefully, we can document, inshallah, professionally and, and in, a, in a proper way. I was with him. I was the first teacher to be recruited uh, by Sheikh Muhammad when my English was broken, completely broken. I was still new in the country, subhanAllah. But he says, you know what? You're going to have to do it. He had the vision. He said, basically, I wasn't seeing myself what he was seeing in me. But he was that man. He saw that, you know what? You succeeded when you were in Medina. You're going to succeed when you're here in America. Although I wasn't have that capacity in myself to learn really, subhanAllah. Uh, but uh, uh, he saw that. And he wasn't just a dreamer, he was a visionary. And he just, he saw you 10 years ahead. Like he knows that in 10 years, you're going to be this, you're going to be doing this, you're going to be doing that. And for me, that's ridiculous. Like sitting in a hotel room uh, on the bed together with a laptop and trying to, you know, figure out what class should we teach, what we're going to call this class and what kind, how we even draw the, the poster for that class and all these kind of little things, subhanAllah. And then he just like, out of nowhere, he comes out. He said, look, we're going to call this class the fiqh of love. And I could see in his eyes at the time we were laughing. I was like, what are you talking about? But I can see that the man was really, you know, light years ahead. He was seeing it. He wasn't just dreaming it. He was seeing it. And that's something is, is just unique about Sheikh Muhammad, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, that uh, uh, he was really able to see things that we were not able to see. And alhamdulillah, they were very happy and glad that... Uh, uh, I was part of this beautiful legacy of, uh, of Sheikh Muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala You know, uh, Sheikh Muhammad, through him, I came to learn, so I, I came to know many, many, many people that I cherish in my life right now as friends, as students, as, uh, you know, more than that, family, you could call them, alhamdulillah, Amin. And I believe that one of the greatest things about Sheikh Muhammad, he was a connector. He's a man who really uh, knows the people, loves the people, works for the people, and he connects the people together. Because he knows, you know, if you wanna if you wanna make a, a legacy out of it, you really have to connect them together. They have to be a family. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, I can tell you, he he is the one that really connects all these people from around the globe, from around the world, uh, to get to know each other 
at the beginning for those who know the maghrib uh, history uh, through uh, screen names and your avatars and and all that stuff on the forums and then when we had our first am summit in 2008 and people got together and started meeting, meeting in conferences because oh my god you're this and you're that by the screen names they had on the forum subhanallah what a what a sweet gathering we used to have uh, because sheikh muhammad rahmatullah it was always always those beautiful moments here and there that you uh, uh, you look at and again, you see that he was a great connector, alhamdulillah. Many, many people like uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, like Akh Mustafa Khalifa, rahimahullah ta'ala, the, the, the legend of Durba, rahmatullah ta'ala. We met through uh, Sheikh Muhammad and we became so close, alhamdulillah. And uh, never forget these beautiful memories that we cherish together. And I'm sure that many others also remember these beautiful uh, memories, alhamdulillah, Rabbi Amin. So if anything good that we have done in this world, uh, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of teaching in this country, uh, I'll give the credit back to Sheikh Muhammad rahmatullahi ta'ala If anything is going to come in the future as well because of that, I will still give the credit to Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala. Man la yashkur nas la yashkur Allah. If you are not grateful to the people, you will never be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're so grateful to be part of his life. And I'm so grateful on a personal level to make him as part of my personal life. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. It is a, a privilege that I cherish for the rest of my life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him rahmah and forgiveness. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to raise him in the highest ranks of Jannah al Firdus al Ya Rabbil Alameen. And we ask Allah Azza wa when our time comes that we have we live a legacy as beautiful as his legacy and that we meet with him in Jannah al Firdus al Ala with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salihin. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka anabiyya wa muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Sheikh Yasser, I still have my moments and I'm hearing the Shayyuh talk where I'm like, who are they talking about? Um, you know, it's still hard to believe that this is, we're talking about Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif and that he's not with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him and his family. Jazakallah khair. So many beautiful subhanAllah stories that are continue to inspire us. And so may we carry on that legacy. Um, may we all be a sadaqa jariya for him. Alhamdulillah, we have uh, Shaykh Ahsan Hani with us who worked with Shaykh Muhammad on different capacities and different projects. Um, mashallah, I know Sheikh Hassan, we connected on the New Muslim Academy work um, a couple of years back. So it's so nice to have you here. And we're looking forward to you know, hearing a few words from you. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Uh, since I heard the news of Sheikh Muhammad's passing, Rahimallah Ta'ala, a few days ago, I've been reflecting on uh, my connection with him and in the various capacities, uh, as Sister Razia mentioned that I knew him, I worked with him on a number of projects, not only al Maghrib Institute, but a number of different projects that we did together. Uh, but also more than that, just the personal interactions that I had with him. And there are other instructors and people here that knew him better, <clears throat> that spent more time with him. Uh, but one of the things when I reflect uh, about Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the things that comes to my mind is the hadith uh, of Anas radiyallahu anna tirmidhi that the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِعَبْدٍ خَيْرًا إِسْتَعْمَلَهُ If Allah wants good from someone, he uses him. And they said, O Messenger of Allah, how does he use him? He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah gives that person the ability and the success to do goodness before their death. And we know that one of the final acts, if not the final thing that the Shaykh did ta'ala, before he passed away is that he prayed Salah. But his whole life was a testament to doing good, uh, to connecting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's essentially what we as du'at, as students of knowledge do. We try to connect people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think everyone's attested to the fact that Shaykh uh, Muhammad al-Sharif ta'ala, wasn't someone who had a great ego. He wasn't someone who called himself or wanted people to connect to him and his personality. He was always trying to make that connection between people, between Muslims and between their Lord and Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even now in his death, inshallah ta'ala, this is something that we're doing. We're finding our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by taking lessons and benefits from what we take from his life. And when I look back at the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away and we know that that's the greatest calamity that could have ever affected this ummah. There is no greater calamity that affected the ummah uh, the Ummah of Islam, then the death of its messenger and his Prophet What is the moment after that that you realize that there is there is hope for the Ummah, that the Ummah will continue, that the, amongst the companions, they will continue to go from strength to strength. 
And what comes to my mind is that statement of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu when he stood amongst the companions who were going through all of their various stages of grief and each one of them was trying to process what they were feeling and what they were experiencing in very different ways from the most senior of those companions such as Umar radiallahu anhu and Uthman radiallahu anhu to the other companions. And Abu Bakr stood amongst them radiallahu anhu and he said, whosoever worships Allah, Allah is ever living. He will never die. And whosoever worships Muhammad and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has passed away. And you realize then that the companions understood that our connection in this life is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so long as you continue to keep that connection, then there is always inshallah ta'ala good for you and you have benefited from your teachers and from those people that have influenced you. And one thing that Sheikh Muhammad did, and I think as we've heard from various people today and over the last few days, and inshallah ta'ala we will continue to hear from them over the foreseeable future, is that he connected people to Allah, whether through knowledge in Al-Maghrib Institute or whether through making that connection through dua and tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having certainty in Allah azza wa jal, he's someone who wanted to connect people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, I first met uh, Sheikh Muhammad, I think it was in 2008, 2009, when I first became an Al-Maghrib Institute instructor and he came to Birmingham and he visited me in my house and we spent a, a great few hours, a, a number of hours speaking about his vision and it's one of the things that inspired me to join Al-Maghrib Institute. One of the, the main um, you know, memories that I have of Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif ta'ala is his love for teaching Islam and the way that he wanted to teach. And I remember one of the, you know, the, the first course that I actually taught in Al-Maghrib Institute was in Ottawa. And the Sheikh used to live in Ottawa at that time. And I remember teaching there was a tafsir of Surah Al-Kahf and this must have been uh, in the latter part of 2009. And he actually came and he sat for a while and he spoke to me. And one of the things that he told me, one of the one of the, the, or the advice that I took from him at that time is he said that the most influential teacher or the best teacher or the most effective teacher is the one who can take a student from a very basic level and help them upon that journey of ascending into knowledge. You take someone and almost you make for them a staircase. You give to them steps that they can climb so that they can go from what is a basic foundational level into a much more advanced level. And that's something which has stuck with me all of these years and it's something which I always try to implement and do Throughout, uh, throughout my own teaching. One of the other memories that I have uh, of Sheikh Muhammad and one of the things that I really benefited from and one of the things that I loved about the way that he had a vision for Al-Maghrib Institute and it's something which the, the staff and the, and the brothers at Al-Maghrib and the shiuch uh, have, have carried on uh, and, and, and I can, and can attest to inshallah is the, the thing that Sheikh Muhammad had that he really wanted was for students of knowledge in the West to be honored. He wanted this thing, you know, a lot of us came from that time period in the 80s and 90s where the imams of the masjids and the students of knowledge and so on weren't really very well respected or they weren't really given their rights uh, in terms of respect and in terms of what they needed in order to be able to in, uh, to be able to teach Islam and to reach out to people and to connect the next generation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the things that I remember most vividly in all of my interactions with him is that we really had this vision that the students of knowledge, imams, da'is, sheikhs, they should be people who have a, a strong standing in the community because we honor them and we respect them, not because of who they are as individuals or personalities, but because of who it is or what it is that they represent. They represent the heirs of the Prophet wasallam. These are the peoples, these are the people who have inherited knowledge and they're spending their days and their nights and they're sacrificing and their families are sacrificing in order to be able to spread that knowledge of this religion. And they deserve, because of that honor, and they deserve because of that respect. And that's something which I found uh, greatly from Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah uh, ta'ala. And one of the things that I just want to finish upon, and I have many memories, and again, you know, I think like many of the people that are speaking today, I tried to write some stuff down and, and I couldn't really process how to, where to start and where to begin and, and how to kind of uh, order those thoughts. Uh, but one of the personal interactions that I had with him, which I think also speaks to the wide issue of, mm. of his family, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make things easy for them. Uh, I, a few years back, I went to Dubai with my eldest daughter uh, and I was going on a personal visit. And I reached out to the Sheikh as I usually did when I was in Dubai. We, we would normally sit or we would come and meet and we would go for, for a meal or we'd go out somewhere. But I had with me on this case, my, my eldest daughter with me, uh, who at the time was maybe 19 years old. And so I reached out to the Sheikh and I said, look, I'm in Dubai and I'd love to meet you, but I have my daughter with me as well. So maybe we can just, you know, quickly meet, give salams and so on. But the Sheikh, you know, as he always did, he wanted to sit and he wanted to have a meal and go out and spend some time because we didn't really see each other very often, uh, you know, because of the distances and the time and so on. And so what he actually did at that time was he arranged for his wife and for his children to come along as well so that my daughter could go be, be with his wife and his, and his children, his daughters, 
uh, and she could spend some time with them and they could take her to the mall and they could buy her stuff and whatever and we could have some time by ourselves and that's something which you know which i greatly appreciated because it would have been difficult for me you know my daughter would have become very bored very quickly listening to two uh, older men just speak uh, but he actually understood that this is something which we want to do so we have to kind of make a provision for us so this wasn't my idea it was something which he which he himself suggested uh, rahimahullah ta'ala and we did and she had a great time they went and spent a number of hours together and likewise we were able to connect and speak and benefit from one another as well and and again that's something which i remember it's just those personal moments that i think all of us experienced with the sheikh uh, that shows that his his impact wasn't just on the da'wah that he left behind but in the way that he influenced people and the way that he benefited and tried to help and advise one another so ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, showers his mercy upon Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever elevates his status and forgives his shortcomings and that Allah Azza wa gives us all the ability to remain steadfast upon this religion and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes from amongst those people who uh, who inshallah ta'ala continue on his legacy and, and, and leave for ourselves a legacy as well. And I want to inshallah ta'ala make dua for his family because the sacrifice that we all make as, as imams and as sheikhs and as du'at uh, it is something which is greatly felt by our families and, and we can understand especially in the situation what that means but it's something which they do on a daily basis they sacrifice so that we can do we can do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from us to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah ta'ala makes this easy for them and that allah Azza gives them the patience and the fortitude and the strength and the steadfastness to be able to overcome this trial barakallahu feekum wa sallam bi muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amin jazakallah khair um, Alhamdulillah, many of you saying, you know, we need to compile all of these gems. Inshallah, that will be in the works. Um, so next we have uh, Sheikh Suleiman Hani, Alhamdulillah, who got to interact with Sheikh Muhammad, mashallah, and, you know, was really a big part of that journey. So Sheikh Suleiman, um, who, mashallah, is an instructor, very much part of the Ilma Khib team, looking forward to hearing some of your experiences and just reflections on uh, Sheikh Muhammad's, you know, your relationship with him. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Jazakumullahi Barakallahu feekum. Honestly, I, I don't even know where to begin because uh, as you heard from many others before, uh, there's just so many different things that Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, rahmatullahi alayhi, has uh, brought uh, of goodness and impacted of goodness in our lives as individuals, as communities, and really for the entire world, alhamdulillah. And that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there was someone like this amongst us. Uh, one of the things that I can emphasize is that uh, and a big part of what I wanted to do, even as a high schooler back then, in, in terms of seeking knowledge, uh, it wasn't clear cut in terms of how I would be able to utilize something like this in the West. And so with the efforts of you know, Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, I felt like I had a renewed ambition, that there is a way for us to facilitate this knowledge to our communities. There's a way to take this uh, inheritance from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and distribute it and facilitate it in a matter that is uh, appealing to people. And in fact, it inspired and set off a, a, a series of inspirations towards others uh, in terms of institutes and organizations. It raised the standards for so many people. I would frequently reference Sheikh Muhammad when it came to uh, punctuality. I'm someone who, every, everyone who knows me knows, I really care about time management, time mastery. I speak about it often. Uh, and so everything that I had been reading and doing, I felt I could relate to what Sheikh Muhammad Rahmatullahi Ali was uh, teaching and instilling in us uh, of values. And I'm thinking here about how uh, you know, the, the optimism that comes from having interacted with him and learning from him and uh, his, his effect and his uh, influence on shaping our lives uh, should cause us to ask, what is my role? What is your role in this world? Because oftentimes people think one person can't make a difference. And if the legacy of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif rahmatullahi alayhi can be summarized amongst the summaries is that one person can absolutely make a difference. One individual can make a huge difference. This is not to say that there are not other factors, that there are not people who along the way helped to facilitate and that his family did not sacrifice time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward them and elevate their ranks through their patience and perseverance in sharing his time with the rest of the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But believe in yourself and believe, and, and Sheikh Muhammad would want us to believe that you can make a difference. The difference you make, however, does not have to be necessarily known to everyone. Because as we know from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, the continuous charity uh, could be, uh, in terms of your ongoing deeds, that Sadaqah Jariya, it could be the knowledge that you left behind 
and it could be a righteous child that prays for you. So investing time in family, investing time in raising your children might be the best thing you can possibly do. In fact, you may be raising up the next uh, legend, the next legacy for our ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all in goodness. I just completed right now, so I apologize about the background here. I just completed a workshop on the promises of Allah in the Quran. And the first moment in which I heard the news that Sheikh Muhammad rahimahullah, passed away, uh, after that initial just shock, inna lillah wa inna rajiun, repeating it over and over and over again, I looked up some of his last videos out of curiosity. And I didn't know this, subhanAllah. This workshop that I did today had been planned for a, a long time. One of the lectures that showed up on the very first page was the promises of Allah in the Qur'an. And as I went through it, almost everything that I had been preparing and writing down, he had been touching on in that Ilmfest lecture. And especially here, thinking about the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, specifically for the believers who do good with the limited time that they have. Not only might they see the goodness in this life, hayatan tayyibah, but the goodness of the akhirah as well. The reward and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust in the promise of Allah. The more you trust in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you will take advantage of your time in this world to follow in the footsteps of individuals and great legends and inspirations like Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. May Allah have mercy on him. And so while there are many other things that he has influenced in terms of our lives and our communities, the question is what are we going to do moving forward? How will we carry on this kind of legacy? Uh, what will we do in terms of being awakened in our hearts? Well, somebody recently said to me, a family member, he said that the scary thought is when you see the outpouring of support and dua and the impact that he has had on the world, may Allah have mercy on him, is that some people will be awakened by this and others will not benefit. Others will ignore and they won't change their lives. If there's anything that should cause you to feel like you should do more with your life, it is moments like this. And in a way, this is your opportunity, inshallah ta'ala, to start what it is you want to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so don't hold yourself to a low standard. Be ambitious and optimistic and work with others and not just optimistic but hopeful as well. Uh, Iman and wahtisab and that you worship Allah with belief. You have full conviction and you're hoping for that reward. You're hoping for the effect. You're hoping that if you keep trying and you don't give up that there will be a ripple effect of good on the world. Whether or not your name is known is not the point but your legacy is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is something we learn in fact from the legacy of Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. The last thing that I'll say is this. You know how oftentimes many, uh, many people who are busy, in general, most people, if they receive too many emails and messages, they're less likely to respond to everyone, right? So a lot of mashayikh, generally speaking, are just over uh, bombarded with emails and questions and things like this to the extent that literally if we were to do nothing but respond to messages, that's all we would be doing. And so it's, it's not always easy to see that there's an email, a question. Sheikh Muhammad in 2005, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, when Al-Maghrib came to Michigan for the first time, my brother and my sister had been very active amongst the very first students. And they were very active with the Qabila. My sister was exam coordinator later on. Uh, we were all attendees, the entire family. Uh, eventually, at one point, one of my other sisters was an Amira. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very blessed and honored to be working with this Sadaqa Jari that he left behind in the area of uh, teaching and, and academic affairs. My brother emailed Sheikh Muhammad a question. Just asking him a question, uh, and he benefited from one of his lectures. And Sheikh Muhammad responded with a lengthy email to the extent that there was so much ihsan in his response. He asked my brother, and we still have the email, subhanAllah. He asked my brother if he could take permission to, you know, kind of like, you know, modify it and take it out and then to uh, basically share it on the forums back in the day with the Al Maghrib forums. And, and that was because he put so much excellence into what he was doing. Brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you do, Make time to help other people. You don't know the impact that it will have. You don't know how much they'll benefit from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Shaykh Muhammad al-Sharif. And allow us to continue the different forms of Sadaqa Jariyah. We are all in a way the, the manifestation of that Sadaqa Jariyah, a reflection of his Sadaqa Jariyah with all that he has done for the Ummah. Raise your standards for yourself. Believe in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and utilize your time as best as you can and take something from this moment because these are very rare moments for the Ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif and grant his family patience and perseverance and condolences really to the entire ummah. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I mean, Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Salman. 
Um, Alhamdulillah, so many beautiful gems and inspiration and really, I think, captures, um, Alhamdulillah, the hope, the vision uh, that Sheikh Muhammad Latin may Allah have to strengthen uh, you in that work. So Alhamdulillah, we have uh, Sheikh Riyad on now, who's also, uh, you know, Marshall worked closely with Sheikh Muhammad in the past and has always brought such a beautiful energy to his work. So uh, Jazakallah khair for being with us, Sheikh Riyad, and, you know, I know we're looking forward to hearing from you. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Riyad, are you able to hear me? Uh, I can't hear you. We can see you. Not sure. No, we're still not getting any sound. Are you connected to maybe Bluetooth at all or? Maybe your audio setting. Sorry, you guys, just be patient with us as we help shape you. Um, if you want to check maybe the audio setting if your mic's connected. No, no, no sound. So I'm guessing you're not able to hear me either then. Oh, you can hear me? Okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, but yeah, we can't hear you. Oh, subhanAllah. We're really looking forward to hearing. From you. Well, you know what, Sheikh Liyad, why don't you try hopping off and hop back on? I know sometimes that works too. Okay, alhamdulillah. And while Sheikh Riyad is doing that, inshallah, um, you know, for those of you that have been watching, have been with us, um, you know, feel free to obviously type in the chat, share some of the gems that you're holding on to. Um, you know, alhamdulillah, like, uh, what's been beautiful is each instructor coming and sharing how you know, Sheikh Mohammed had a very personal relationship with each one. And um, and Alhamdulillah, you know, had a very personal relationship and was able to give them that attention. Was really able to make them feel that closeness. And I think that's what's so beautiful about Sheikh Muhammad. He never held back from that. You're back, Sheikh Riyad. Are you? Oh, no, we're not. Can you hear me? I can tell you. Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I just like can log back in. بسم الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله um, I don't know why I'm shaking because I don't know I don't know where to start from um, I know it's us and it's gonna take time to digest this whole thing when I I, I literally delete it. I received something on the, on the social media, like on WhatsApp scam. I deleted it. You know, I said, you know, why people do this? So I deleted. I. It's not like I didn't want to believe it, but you know how things are with social media now. People just. I. I thought it was some sort of a scam or, or anything. Um, and this bit of truth. It is a bit of truth, but it is. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it in the Quran, in the Quran, وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ It's come with the truth. And the truth is, is that we all at some point go into, the truth is, is that we shall stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is al-haqq. So, my brothers and sisters, is that um, Prophet is, Sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from, from the sudden death. But tell that um, um, I'm still, it's still early for me, or, or I've got a long way to go, or you, you never know. You know, whether you're this, this truth that you know, puts an end to everything, that puts an end to everything, this haqiqah, it puts an end to the Sadness of those who are sad and to the happiness of those who are happy. It puts an end to the sickness of those to those who are healthy. To the fortune of those who are fortunate, of those who are poor. This reality, this haqiqa is al maut. It is this it is uh haqiqa and it is a bitter haqiqa drank from it. From this bitter cup called death, right? 
so was عليه رحمة الله عليه but all I know my brothers and sisters is that Sheikh Muhammad inshallah he's in a better place all I know my brothers and sisters is that Sheikh uh, have answered the questions of man rabbuk and Muhammad has inshallah has he did in say you know in fact re, you know replied because he lived in accordance with the commands of Allah Azza wa and he did say deen yal islam Muhammad's life was about islam everything he did was about and he did all I know that he answered the question would say my prophet is Muhammad because prophet because Sheikh Muhammad uh, love for the prophet Muhammad if some of you who may take in the uh, the Sheikh Muhammad's you know the Sira seminar uh, and when it used to come to the death of the prophet you would see Sheikh Muhammad you know sobbing and crying you know, off of the love at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa All I know is that Sheikh Muhammad when elevated his soul into the heavens and as the as the soul knocked at the gate of the first heaven, the angels inside the heavens were who? And the angel answered Muhammad ibn Dimi. you know, Sheikh his father, the name of his father, and then the angels would say, "This soul, this beautiful soul, all oh, this smell coming from this beautiful soul." And then I've said, "This is the soul of, of Muhammad ibn, you know, his father." So all I know, he was elevated into the heavens. Allah Azza wa Jal, I've said, write the name of my slave amongst the Illiyin, those who are in the highest level." And then bring him back for his soul shall come back to earth for he shall be resurrected for is that when muhammad you know this beautiful man bright man came in if in fact before that all i know is, is he was told by this bright faced man abshir glad tidings to you glad tidings promised and sheikh muhammad have said who are you your beautiful face with this beautiful news who are you and that man said I am your I am you made me I am your salam I am your siyam ya Muhammad I am your, your I am your I am Al Maghrib which you have uh, institute which you have initiated and learned which you have memorized that which you have taught to others I am the lectures which you have gear series i am the discover you programs i am the dua pro i am -Salih. i am your righteous deed ya muhammad and then that beautiful man will act. all i know is that sheikh muhammad is in a better place you know he has said before rahmatullah alayh, you know how do you want to be remembered once you die once you die? he has asked that question how do you want to be remembered? You know, so sometimes there's some people who will be, you know, they, they, people will hear about their name and they will never heard of this person. Who is he? Never seen him, never heard of him. He's like a dot. And some would say, who? who? Inna lillahu ni raja. Muhammad al-Sharif. Inna lillahu ni raja. La hawla wa la quwa. People that have never seen him making the dua for him. This is how you'd be remembered. This is how he will be remembered. And this is how, how he will be remembered until the end of time. Sheikh Muhammad al Sharif, people are still benefiting. A lot of us today are in his book of records. A lot of people who did not pray sat up into his lectures. People who were not fasting, people who were not doing wearing hijab started wearing his lectures and his seminars. People who are having issues at home, Allah empower them and, and bless them with, with 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 serenity in their home. After this is all I know about Sheikh Muhammad al Sharif, He did leave a legacy, a mountain, 
We have lost a giant. We have lost a genius. Yet his work remains behind him. Rahmatullah. Adal Jamih. Rahmatullah. Mercy upon him and give that tidings and patience, beautiful patience to him, all who loves him and, and to all those Zam the brothers and sisters who are working, keep working with him, inshallah ta'ala. This sadaqa jariya, you know, ongoing sadaqa charity in his misal hasanat. Jazakumullah khair. It's been a while. It's been a long time. But I'm happy to the the you know, the, this instant is not, not as uh, happy as I would have been present with you. But inshallah, alhamdulillah that I'm here at least so I can show some gratitude for what he has done for me and what he has done for my family and what he has done for the ummah of Rasulullah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Riyad. Wa alaikum as-salam. Alhamdulillah, I know the connection was a little um Unstable, so Jazakallah for being patient. Alhamdulillah, we were still able to get some of those gems from Sheikh Riyad. Um, Alhamdulillah, next we have Sheikh Majid Mahmoud, who's also one of the instructors with Al Maghrib. Salam, Sheikh Majid. Thank you for being on with us. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for the uh, hosting the event and for putting this event together. Thank you. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing a few words from you. I know, mashallah, you had your own personal and beautiful relationship with Sheikh Mohammed. So please go ahead and share a few words. All right. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. First of all, I'd like to thank all those who uh, are watching us. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you to Al Maghrib Institute for putting this event together. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever good comes out of this, whatever good comes out of Al Maghrib and other wonderful projects that Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif rahmahullah is uh, associated with to be in his scale of good deeds. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Um, as you've heard many times, there's a lot that can be said. But there's one line that he keeps saying, he keeps mentioning in his marketing. And I know many people who know Sheikh Muhammad, they know this line, which is, give your excuses a black eye. No excuses. Give your excuses a black eye. And subhanAllah, something about Sheikh Muhammad is his ihsan and his excellence. So I'll share with you a few things, inshallah, very quick. One of the things that Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif has taught me in his programs is to always have like a plan b he says for example now you're having a class you're having a live stream you know uh, a class that you're preaching or whatever the case may be have another laptop ready just in case you lose the first connection and if you don't have uh, if you have wi-fi make sure that you have enough data plan on your cell phone so there was always a plan b that he used to do and this is an example of his ihsan now, in case I lose my connection, I'm out of in, in a in, uh, different city right now, just trying my best to, to log in. But the point being here is having a plan B. And this definitely saved me in many situations. And that's something that shows the example and the ihsan of Sheikh Muhammad. Rahimahullah. Also, another thing to share regarding Sheikh Muhammad, I attended his niche, near, a niche hero class. And this was a very intensive class regarding, you know, uh, obtaining your um, or seeking to achieve your ultimate goals in life and so on. And one of the things that we had to do in that workshop is to actually come in front of Sheikh Muhammad. And then we have to verbalize what is it that we want to achieve. And generally, I'm a very uh, any shy person, uh, introvert, whatever you want to call it. So for me to stand up there, that's one difficulty. And to tell everybody what I want to achieve, that's even more difficult. And the actual goal I want to achieve, because Sheikh Muhammad is there, is even more difficult. And you may wonder, okay, what is it that I want to achieve at that time? This was back around approximately 2000, maybe 12, approximately. So my turn came up and he says, okay, your turn. What's your goal? What is it that you want to accomplish? So I was very nervous and I told him my dream my wish, and he wants, you know, for those who know Shaykh Muhammad, sometimes he wants to be very specific with your goals. You, you don't just say, I want to be successful. No, be exactly. You want to be a successful engineer that works on BMW cars, uh, suspension parts. You know, he's very specific. So I said, my, my, my wish, my, my dream that I wish to contribute is to become an Al-Maghrib instructor. And without a doubt, he was shocked, but he did not laugh. He did not say, you... Because I didn't really have any uh, Islamic background education, like formal, like he and other wonderful mashayikh have done. 
So he looked at me, he smiled, didn't rebuke, then he actually kind of gave me a plan. He actually helped out on how to become an Al-Maghrib instructor, subhanAllah. And one of the things that he said, I would not hire an Al-Maghrib instructor unless he's half of the Quran. And I was like 20 some years old at that time. So subhanAllah, this was very encouraging. You know, may Allah accept from all of us. So I went ahead and actually went to a Quran memorization program and finished the whole Quran before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this too, inshallah, will be on a scale of good deeds. And after the niche hero program, this comes to show you like when he gives advice or when he re- is sincere about his projects, it's not just, you know, well, I want to make money and move on. No, I'm going to take care of my client, going to take care of my students. So I get an email from Al Maghrib Institute offering a full ride scholarship. Now, m- most people do not know this. And this, maybe this is the first time I actually mention it. He actually provided me a full ride scholarship from Al Maghrib Institute to go have an official uh, Islamic education, subhanAllah. So all these things to be able to uh, you know, achieve my goal, which he was able to assist me with that. Alhamdulillah, eventually with the help of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, Al Maghrib Institute, Sheikh Walid, and the team, Bifadlillah, I was able to finish my Islamic studies, my bachelor's, alhamdulillah, and became uh, an Al-Maghrib instructor. May Allah accept from all of us. This is one of many stories and examples uh, to share with you regarding Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif. Once again, remember what he says, give your excuses a black eye. May Allah bless you all. May Allah protect you. I have a class coming up. I have a class coming up at Maghrib Seminar, August 6th, inshallah, in the Bay Area. And I feel this class has to be different. I feel I need to use what happened and realize, Majid, whatever you will do will be a sadaqah jariah for Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif, inshallah. So I really want to make sure this class will be a memorable one. May Allah grant us all success and all those who are teaching and all those who are going to attend and all those who are going to market and all those who are going to support. May Allah bless you, protect you. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Majid. I wish I could attend that class. Uh, inshallah, if you're in the Bay Area, definitely put that on your calendar. Alhamdulillah. Um, so Alhamdulillah, we have next uh, Shaykh Yusuf Idris. And I have a big smile on my face because I haven't seen Shaykh Yusuf for a few years. But mashallah, he helped um, or is part of in bringing Shaykh Muhammad on board with a very special project that was so dear to Shaykh Muhammad. Um, so welcome, Shaykh Yusuf. It's so nice to see you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bless you and your family. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing some words from you. Oh, Sheikh Yusuf, we can't hear you. Um, just check your settings. No, still nothing. Um, we had this issue with Sheikh Riyadh as well. Maybe if you just try leaving the link and then come back on. That might work. It seemed to work for him. No, can't hear still. So we'll just uh, wait, inshallah, a couple, 30 seconds till inshallah Sheikh Yusuf gets on. But um, for those that are not familiar, familiar Sheikh Yusuf Idris um, is, mashallah, the founder of New Muslim Academy, um, a beautiful website that supports new Muslims. And so Sheikh Mohammed was um, brought on in a big part of you know helping uh, New Muslim Academy in their vision and what they were building and just really, mashallah, you know, helping and in, in creating that really high standard that Sheikh Mohammed does things with the Ihsan and the level of excellence in creating that. So um, if you're on here and you're a recent new Muslim um, or know someone, I encourage you to go to that website. Welcome back, Sheikh Yusuf. No, we still can't hear you. Let's wait a second. I don't know. I know Sheikh Riyadh, we started talking that it just came on, but um, subhanAllah. You, you were able to check your settings, Sheikh? No, we're not still getting any sound. I'm not sure um, if it's because the much of the video we're able to see clearly. I, the no, ah, subhanallah. You know what, Sheikh Yusuf, we'll keep trying. We're not going to give up because we definitely want to hear from you, inshallah. So we'll keep trying and hopefully we can get that sound up and running. Um, I know Sheikh Hasib Noor is here as well. Um, oh, uh, Sheikh Yusuf, are you on your cell phone or laptop? On your cell phone? Okay, on your cell phone. We were thinking maybe if you switch devices, if that would help. Okay. Uh, Khair, inshallah. Um, 
we'll, we'll have to, we'll figure it out, you guys. Michelle will get shaky, shaky sifted through. So on somebody asked what the website was. Um, it was newmuslimacademy.org. And that is a website that um, in the Mashallah curriculum they have that um, Sheikh Muhammad was part of and Alhamdulillah supported. So um, just give me a second, guys. We're going to inshallah have our, our next um, instructor or uh, speaker on to share a few words. And, you know, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, while we're we're doing that um, and hoping that we'll get Sheikh Yusuf Idris on, I think what's been really incredible is um, you know, and Sheikh Majid also reminding us of that, you know, as much as um, we're talking about Sheikh Hamid and much of the beautiful legacy he left, he was someone who was just very raw, right? He was very raw and honest in the most beautiful of ways. And so that quote that Sheikh Majid said, you know, give your excuses a black eye, that was really what Sheikh Muhammad was about. Um, he wasn't going to let you settle. There are many times where, he, you know, he called out students, he would call me out if I, you know, said something or um, you know, I was playing small. He was just like, no, like that's not going to work. And so I think, uh, you know, for anyone who got to be in his classes or take from him. Okay. We, we, we loved that, that um, aspect of him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just muted myself for the feedback. Sheikh Yusuf, are you there? Okay. Inshallah, we'll, we'll keep trying. Um, we'll see if, inshallah, we can get him back. But we had some sound. I heard my feedback, so alhamdulillah. Um, but, yeah, I was just uh, sharing that, you know, alhamdulillah, Sheikh Muhammad was someone that was and, and that's rare to find in people. We know that, um, you know, subhanAllah, there's that famous quote that Umar bin Khattab then who is known for that, um, you know, when you praise me, you have, oh goodness, I'm like totally going to butcher the quote. But basically he says that, you know, those friends who can be honest with you and give you criticism and feedback, um, those are the one, friends you cherish. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Muhammad was definitely one of those where, um, you know, he saw that you weren't maybe honoring your best self and you know pushing yourself to live that way he didn't have you know he wouldn't hold back and kind of letting you know and he also was very open to that um i, I shared yesterday and many other martial instructors have shared um that they you know alhamdulillah like getting that honest feedback from him so alhamdulillah we have sheikh amar with us um to come on and say a few words welcome sheikh amar hey, how you all doing alhamdulillah how are you Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Um, so, so, Alhamdulillah. I mean, it's it's uh, incredible how Sheikh Muhammad Rahimullah, you know, joined, joined us in, in life and in death. I think that of the things that have been spoken about and will continue to be spoke about is the and sisterhood that Al Maghrib was able to create. Um, center in, in Dallas, Texas, uh, we were able to, uh, to gather, be able to see so many brothers and sisters who were all, all became close of an Maghrib Institute and, and they were from California and New York and, and, and so many different places. But almost even the reason why the entity is because of the relationships that they built through an Maghrib Institute. And I think when it comes to the Ayyir, um, that inshallah Sheikh Muhammad uh, will receive is the amount of marriages that have happened from the large Islam in the Western world where people were able to, to, to come to, together. Not, not just learn and study Islam, but how many families were created through this work that that provides and so there, there's there's much love there's so much ahua. and i think one, one of the manifestations and, and i i think we do have have to 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 really you know, to how much sheikh muhammad is loved but also the great greatness of the 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 brotherhood that is with sheikh abu isa hafizullah ta'ala i mean the, I saw the video of Sheikh Abu Isa at the, uh, at the graveside of 
Sheikh Mohammed and really as suddenly as, as we all got the news of Sheikh Mohammed passing away, I feel that, that someone like Sheikh Abu Isa was ready and took a flight and landed in Dubai and you know there were others who also to Dubai Ali and Noor and Atik and, and, and others you know who, who love Sheikh Mohammed the people were in New York trying to book flights to Dubai and people who were in Houston trying to book who wanted to, uh, to to go was able to go but that love that people enjoyed for Sheikh Mohammed but also that incredible brotherhood for us facilitated and created um, you know through seeking knowledge way back in the day I remember one of the first things that I heard from our Sheikh Sheikh Yassir Jass he said he said that knowledge is a kinship between its people that knowledge facilitates is it facilitates that that family bond and you see among all of the people who experience either learning from Sheikh, uh, teaching with Sheikh Muhammad, or uh, you know, anyway. And so this was, uh, and this continues to be part of his legacy. Mercy on him. Uh, um, there's, I've been dealing for the past couple of days, even just thinking about, I think what every everybody's been trying to appreciate is what has really made him uh, uh, so you you know things continue to be uncovered of the different inter interactions and how meaningful and I, I talked yesterday about his intentionality the purpose with which he made his life incredibly meaningful because he made sure to design in his life it's happened to him but everything that he he he, he uh, tried to make sure that it was, was a incredibly high purpose so whether you see it or whether you see it manifest in discovery you the things that he gave his life's energy it was either teaching people how to worship Allah as Zawajal learning the sacred sciences through al maghrib or who's teaching people how to dream break for themselves in whatever field that they wanted to excel in in their lives through discover you he dedicated himself to big ideas he dedicated himself to the growth of other people he invested time in making sure that other people's talents grow and i think that's part of the reason why so many people were so affected by him because he didn't just make it about him at all but he made it about you and he realized that if he is able to raise a nation truly, that he would have accomplished much more than if he simply focused on Muhammad al-Sharif by himself and tried to do things by himself. And I think that's part of his energy. And that's part of the, the real lessons. Because at the end of the day, everybody stays here for a period of time and then everybody trans traverses, everybody passes away. And so if you're able to invest in those who are around you, then inshallah you invest in something beyond yourself and that's something that will be, that will outlast yourself even so ask Allah Azza wa to have mercy on Sheikh Muhammad and to to grant us all beautiful patience at his sudden departure and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes our expectation of him something that is accepted from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he be gathered with the prophets and the martyrs and the righteous and the truthful and what excellent companions are those Jazakumullah khair I mean, just like I'll share, Sheikh Amar, I love that line, um, you know, invest in something outside of yourself, because alhamdulillah, that's really the legacy that he left behind. And, you know, yesterday, um, you know, yesterday, you really caught me when he said to you, when you said that he said to you that you're an eagle and I want to see you fly. Because I remember, I remember in each hero, him talking about eagles and ducks and how you can't force a duck to be an eagle. And I, I had some ducks around me that I was trying to convince him that they're eagles. And he's like, Ahmad, you got to let them go. They're ducks. Just leave them alone. And I'm like, okay. But so for him to call you an eagle, that's the highest praise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what he did, right? He made people believe in themselves. Really, that's something that you hear a lot of people say, that he believed in me before I believed in myself. Mm -hmm.
and, yeah. and, and he that's pushed you. He pushed you till you were even before you're ready. He he challenged you, and he didn't hold yeah. back. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I know he did that with you as well, um, uh, Sheikh Omar. He Absolutely. did not hold back. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And we're greater people for it. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa strengthen you and I mean, the work that you do. Jazakallah um, khair. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. We have Sheikh Yusuf Idris back, so we're going to hopefully get to hear from him. So let's. So let's oh, we can oh. try. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me now? Yes. No? Yes. You can? Yes. Yes. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, so, subhanAllah, uh, uh, to be honest with you, I, I, I really don't even know what to say, but uh, one of my uh, uh, British friends uh, here in, uh, in Saudi, he lives in Mecca, um, he called me yesterday and he basically wanted to talk to me about Sheikh Muhammad and he asked me how do you feel and I told him to be his name is uh, brother Nassim I told him you know what brother Nassim to be honest with you I just feel like uh, I need someone to help me uh, to help me cry and he said to be honest with you uh, Yusuf I feel the same exact way um, the subhanAllah for the past four days or so uh, find myself remembering Sheikh Muhammad in, in different ways and every time I um, uh, I remember him I can't uh, but uh, shed tears over um, his loss Rahimahullah uh, Ta'ala Rahmatan Wasi'an May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala make him from the people of paradise uh, I was fortunate enough to get to know uh, Sheikh Mohammed when he first moved to the uh, U.S. Uh, the early uh, 2000s, and uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, attend the very first lecture that he ever gave um, after he came back from uh, Medina, and I was fortunate enough to also see uh, the very first course uh, that he gave. In, uh, uh, in the U.S., in Al-Maghrib, when Al-Maghrib first uh, started. There are so many lessons, in my opinion, that could be learned from uh, the life of Sheikh Muhammad. But one of the most important ones is that uh, if you know Sheikh Muhammad, you know that um, he's a very uh, truthful person. Um, he says what he uh, believes. Uh, if you have uh, something that needs to be fixed he will tell you straight up that you need to do uh, such and such if he feels that something is not going to work out he will tell you tell you straight up that it's not going to um, work out and I feel that uh, you know having this uh, truthfulness in our relationships is something that is uh, that is needed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are um, among those who are truthful. Another thing that we can always uh, remember Sheikh Muhammad for is that and, and alhamdulillah uh, Allah blessed me with writing a little article about him uh, in Arabic in hopes that the Arabic speaking um, da'wah um, uh, brothers and sisters will we'll make dua for Sheikh Muhammad and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Amin was published today in one of the magazines uh, here in the Arab world. Uh, one of the things that Sheikh Muhammad uh, was always calling people for is uh, is dua. And I don't know if any da'ya around me from the not Western dua or the Arabic speaking dua who uh, you know was so creative in, in engaging people in uh, in dua and subhanAllah I always said to myself if there is one thing that we should be doing now for Sheikh Muhammad it's the only thing that will uh, help him uh, in his grave and that is the thing that he used to call us to do which is uh, uh, to make dua and the more dua we make for him the more inshallah ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jal um, will protect him and the more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshaAllah will shower him with his mercy and with his forgiveness and raise uh, his ranks because indeed no one knows what is going to happen to them. 
uh, we learn this from the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says that I am the messenger of Allah and I don't know what's going to happen to me and uh, but we can always hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgives and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers uh, his servants with his mercy and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accepts our testimony uh, for Sheikh Muhammad and uh, and for others uh, who are alhamdulillah like him uh, who are uh, doing uh, goodness for people uh, like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that antum shuhada allahi fi ard that you are the ones who uh, will uh, testify those who will uh, give testimony uh, um, uh, to others uh, so we hope that inshallah ta'ala with all these people saying so beautiful things about so many beautiful things about Sheikh Muhammad and there were all inshallah ta'ala truthful in our testimony that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise uh, the ranks of Sheikh Muhammad in uh, in paradise one of the things that stand out about Sheikh Muhammad for me is how he was able to um, uh, how he was able to uh, have so many skills like I remember the first a poster that he made uh, I believe he used uh, imagine someone using Photoshop uh, uh, 20 years ago or knowing about Illustrator or InDesign or any of these things and he's at the same time uh, a da'i a graduate of Medina half of the Quran so but if it is needed Sheikh Muhammad was there he will he will learn it like I remember um, a couple of years ago or so he told me that he's attending a course on uh, how to take like professional pictures or something utilizing your phone and he was sending me different uh, pictures and uh, and so on and so forth his incredible knowledge in uh, uh, social media marketing and so forth which was a very strong and it is a very strong tool uh, for us to deliver the message uh, of Islam um, the fact that he was a uh, an amazing you know reader and uh, he loved listening to audiobooks every once in a while uh, he would share with me a beautiful book that he uh, listened to and I remember one time he told me today uh, I listened to this entire book in one day and I think it was like uh, we needed like eight hours or something like that to listen to that book uh, so he was a person who definitely had so many skills but he also worked uh, on building you know these skills that he needed for his dunya success as well as his uh, uh, hereafter success uh, there are so many things uh, to be said about uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad but if there is one advice that I will uh, like to advise myself and all of you guys with is to just make dua for him because your duas uh, for him will matter and uh, it was narrated that uh, a parent will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment uh, why is it that I have you know you have been elevated all of these levels and it would be said to them it's because of the dua of your uh, children for you that Allah forgives you so definitely as our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, taught us that uh, a yani dua for parents will always help but also the dua of the general uh, you know, uh, people who love you, uh, who care about you and so forth, will definitely um, help you. Uh, so this is the biggest thing that we can do now for uh, Sheikh Muhammad. Another thing is that, and I know that uh, Al-Maghrib team and the, the Discover You team and so forth are going to work on is spreading the uh, the message um, that uh, Sheikh Muhammad, um, you know, uh, cared for and uh, beautifully uh, crafted. Uh, so if there is any way to uh, promote more of the courses that Sheikh Muhammad gave and so forth I think that this would be a great uh, you know continuous sadaqa continuous uh, charity for Sheikh Muhammad uh, as our sister uh, who also had a great impact on the, uh, the establishment of uh, new Muslim Academy to the point uh, that actually one of the students said and he sent me that email he told me that uh, when I have a child, I'm going to name her, if I have a daughter, I'm going to name her Razia. 
and he did have a, a, a baby daughter and he sent me her picture and he did name her uh, Razia, mashallah. He said, because the, the, the emails that I get, they always remind me of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this name reminded me of Allah. Uh, so Jazakallah khair also Sister Razi for uh, the uh, the help that and the contributions that you uh, gave at one point to New Muslim Academy. Um, there are so many things that could be said about uh, Sheikh Muhammad again. And uh, one of the things, the qualities, subhanAllah, that stand out for me is how he made sure that everyone around him feel close to him. And this is such a beautiful prophetic sunnah uh, that we find absent. Like, as a matter of fact, many times uh, we maybe intentionally make people feel that this person is special. Okay, but you are, you know, this far away from me or something like that. But Sheikh Muhammad had this unbelievable ability to make everyone around him feel that they are close to him. Uh, and subhanAllah, everyone now who's speaking about Sheikh Muhammad, they will mention, you know, some kind of an incident, some type of, some type of a, uh, a, a, a situation or so uh, that, is, uh, th that shows that this person was uh, an, an intimate person. This was, person was uh, a person who made you feel uh, that you are uh, special, that you are worthy of his, you know, attention, of his uh, sincere advice. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, again, we can just uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgives his sins, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showers his mercy upon him, that Allah azawajal makes him from the um, people of paradise. He definitely inspired so many people uh, to shoot high when they have goals and to pray to Allah azawajal uh, for the highest uh, of the highest uh, of places in paradise. So we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accepted his uh, uh, dua and that uh, that he's from the people uh, of the highest levels in uh, Jannah al Firdaus. Uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, pour patience upon the family uh, of Sheikh uh, Muhammad. Uh, Sheikh Muhammad was a person who was incredibly close uh, to his wife and to his kids. I don't remember a time that I met Sheikh Muhammad except that he would uh, mention uh, his wife. Uh, subhanallah, and this is definitely a sign of love. Uh, as Sheikh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentions, uh, he says, when you love someone, you will mention them a lot. And that is why if you love Allah Azza wa Jalla, you will constantly mention Allah Azza wa Jalla. But even in human relationships, when we love someone, we will mention him uh, a lot. So we, as may be people who know Sheikh Muhammad uh, very closely, we know that he's a person who loved his uh, uh, his wife, he's a person who loved his uh, family, uh, so we could just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants them uh, patience and that uh, the real life is going to be in the hereafter, uh, in paradise, in a place where no one uh, is going to uh, die, no one will experience death, uh, it's going to be an everlasting bliss. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, unite them again uh, in paradise, uh, that they see him again in, uh, in Jannah. Uh, خالدين فيها uh, staying there forever جزاكم الله خير for giving me this uh, opportunity to share uh, a few words about uh, uh, a dear friend and, and a close brother جزاكم الله خير سيستة رازية thank you very much I'm so glad that sound worked out um, that's so beautiful Shaykh Yusuf played a very special part and had a special part in Shaykh Muhammad's life and Alhamdulillah connecting him to Agni Muslim Academy and the incredible work that they do Alhamdulillah um, now we have inshallah Shaykh Hasid Noor uh, with us, who's going to share a few words? Salam, Sheikh Hasid. How are you? Alhamdulillah, good to have you. And you know, we're looking forward to hearing and seeing Sheikh Muhammad through your eyes and mashallah, the relationship and experiences that you had with him. Um, this Friday, uh, I gave a khutbah in the MCC community uh, here in San Diego. Um, and the khutbah was called Legacy of Knowledge, uh, a tribute to Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, rahimahullah ta'ala. And I remember um, I, was, uh, I was just doing khutbah al-hajj, inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu, wa nasta'inu, wa nasta'afiru. And he's the one that we learned that from, literally. Uh, the initial khutbah that 
that the Prophet ﷺ would give in, in Jum'ah and how to do it properly. And, um, you know, there's, there's one thing to, to, to know somebody and then there's another to, for that person to have been your teacher. And I was, the first thing I said to Ammar, uh, Shukri, and I reached out to Bilal Khan, I reached out to uh, some of the other students who were some of the very older students and they've, they were with Sheikh Muhammad even from the very, very beginning um, and throughout the years. Um, and, and, and the only thing I said to him, I said, Wallah, this man impacted who we are today. Uh, it is no doubt that we are from the fruits of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif and, and our other teachers uh, who were al-Maghrib instructors before us. Uh, the likes of Sheikh Yasser Qali, Sheikh Wareed, uh, Sheikh Yasser Barjas, Sheikh Kamal. I mean, these are our teachers. We, we benefited from them. And this is something, unfortunately, in our time today where everyone is trying to make a name for themselves. And, and one thing that, alhamdulillah, we benefited from them is the humility to know and recognize your teachers and to always give them that respect. It is very, very powerful to remember not just the things that you learn, but to attach those memories to them. And they're permanently ingrained in your mind. I remember when I was asked by uh, Noor and Ali to become an Al-Maghrib instructor, and they said that, you're going to be filling some big shoes. And uh, I said, don't tell me you're going to make me do a uh, history of the Khulafa and the seat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The two classes that Sheikh Muhammad uh, uh, taught and made me fall in love with history, made me love, fall in love with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's uh, seerah and uh, the Khulafa al-Rashidin. It was this, it was this uh, class that he taught. So they asked me to, to teach those classes. And I said, first and foremost, it'll never be the same, of course. Um, you, can't, you cannot replicate Sheikh Muhammad uh, in those classes. And every single person who's taken those classes and taken my class, they know that there's a huge difference in the terms of, um, we're, we're, of course, two different styles. But the way he presented it and made you fall in love with the people and the stories as if you knew them is is something irreplicable, of course. And um, I remember a number of things that I just want you all to understand how this deen, when it is taught the way Sheikh Muhammad taught it, it makes you understand its reality. It makes you love Islam from an experiential perspective that is, that is more priceless than if you were to spend a thousand years reading a million books or if you were to spend a thousand books just reading them. But experiential reality is something that Sheikh Muhammad Sharif rahimahullah ta'ala taught me, made me love Islam by. And that is also his love and something that I, I taught in my class with Al-Maghrib. And this is a line that some of my students actually wrote on a, on, a, on a mug and gave it to me. And it's something I really, really cherish. And that's learn history with your tears and your love. And Sheikh Muhammad Sharif Rahimahullah Ta'ala is the one who taught us that. He was, he was one of my first teachers from all of my teachers before Medina, before anyone, who taught us the love of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the love of the, of the Sahaba and the Ahlul Bayt with his tears and with his love. I mean, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult for you to find people like that, that are that genuine, that when they talk about the ones that they love, it, it's that passion that drives the teaching. Um, and I remember I told him two things and subhanAllah, Allah willed it that I would be the one that would do those two things that I, I suggested to him. Uh, and I said, Sheikh Muhammad, why don't we teach the sila on site? And he said, that's an amazing idea. And then subhanAllah, Allah willed it that I would go to Medina and I would, I would you know, try to dedicate my life to try to teach the, the sila of the Prophet Sallallahu on site. And that's still a work in project, of course. Um, and I also told him, I said, Sheikh Muhammad, you know, you should, you should do like a conference where everyone from Al Maghrib can just log on and listen to you on like a teletron. He's like, that's a good idea. And subhanAllah, that, that eventually happened with, with Ilmfest. And subhanAllah, on neither of those projects where he, he motivated us with his passion, with his, with his drive, he himself was never part of those two things. But he built what he always taught us and that is something i want to leave you all with is the drive and passion to serve this ummah 
is that is the one thing that I can take from this man and I can safely say, subhanAllah, that that is more important sometimes the books that you read and the sciences that you study. And, you know, he always taught this one thing, this pipelines of ajr. What are you going to leave behind when, when you leave this earth? What are the pipelines of charity, the sadaqa jariya that you're going to leave behind? What is the legacy you're going to leave behind? And subhanAllah, that stuck in my heart. Because that was the first thing he taught, and that's the last thing he taught. That, that's, that's the first thing he would try to infuse in you, is that you have such a huge potential to serve this ummah, and to serve, to serve all, all Muslims, no matter where you are. You're not bound to anyone. You're bound to the Muslim ummah wherever you are. And that kind of power to motivate, and he saw the potential in people. And he literally, that's... That's what the Prophet ﷺ was successful in. He saw the potential in people and he, he built them. That's who Sheikh Muhammad Sharif was. I mean, I could sit here forever, right? Or we have, we have five minutes to describe our whole experiences. But I want you to understand something. Imam al-Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions uh, a story between um, Maruf al-Karhi and some others. Uh, and Al-Balkhi, between two friends. He's like, we've spent so many years together. What did you learn from our friendship? And he said, I learned eight things. And he, he actually listed out eight things that he learned from that particular friend. And with Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, you can literally list out, these are the specific lessons I learned from this man. And you can spend an hour each. I'm Sheikh, Sheikh Yasser Burja starting and Ammar al-Shukri and and Irtiza Hassan, and Danish, and, and Daniel, and Noor, and uh, Asad. And I mean, you can start naming every, everybody who, who, who was, who's been with Sheikh Muhammad for a very, very long time. And of course, every single volunteer and every single, single student that, that taught with him, Siraj, uh, in Chicago, and so on and so forth. I mean, there, there's so many people that everyone has that deeply ingrained lessons that you learn from Sheikh Muhammad Sharif, which made him a true teacher. If, if I can just, uh, you know, leave off with one last thing, and that is that the life of, the, of Sheikh Muhammad al-Sharif teach us, really, you don't have much time on this earth. We spend so much time on the things that we could do without and don't give priorities on the things that we cannot live without. And then we also have not spent time leaving pipelines of ajr but Sheikh Muhammad literally, when he, when he was in Medina, that, that, those were his thoughts. And he lived his life like that. And one of the most important things, which I'm chill, still trying to master, is, it's, it's very, very difficult, and help you to succeed in doing that, is to just avoid every single thing that will not benefit you. <laughs> right? This is the hadith of the Prophet from the goodness of a person's Islam, that they leave that which does not concern them. Shaykh Muhammad never liked talking about nonsense. And Shaykh Muhammad also, he taught us and ingrained in us. He hated if somebody were to be mentioned in front of him, like in terms of gossip or slander or something like that. It was like, this was the worst thing ever. He hated it. He would, he would, he would speak out against it. And he would immediately, if anybody even was close to something like that, he would change the topic or chastise them. And he lived that. And, you know, these are just some, some lessons off the top of my head, but somebody who deeply impacted us to who we are today, how, how can you even begin to, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the good things that he has done? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him forgiveness, shower him with mercy, and to gather us with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I honestly, genuinely believe, when I, when I heard that Sheikh Muhammad passed away in Dubai and he's going to be buried in, in, uh, in Dubai, I have no doubt, I have no doubt, uh, that his, his rank is almost as if like you're being buried in Mecca and Medina. I, I honestly believe that. Because for a person to love the Prophet ﷺ so much, there was a wisdom for him to be buried there, for people to uh, come from all over the world, make du'a for him. And then I will leave you all with one last thing. I don't know if it has been mentioned already or not, but there was somebody that saw him uh, in their dream on Fajr, on the day of his janazah. And they said, uh, what happened to you, Muhammad? And in, in essence, basically, they said that he was with the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, and the Salihin. This is the last ayah that the Prophet ﷺ recited before he left this earth.
he 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 went before us and no doubt we have a lot to do and, and shoes to fill um but i i just remember the last lesson which is what my teachers taught when they lost their own family member sheikh mohammed mustar shaqiti was interesting enough the teacher of sheikh mohammed and also my teacher in medina and he subhanallah when his mother passed away he still came to class and he still taught and one of the most ba- powerful things um uh, he said it when he was there we know how much he loved his mother alayha wa rahmatullah he said that i i could i couldn't imagine how the sahaba felt when prophet sallallahu had passed away and that made me come here today to continue that legacy and that's the same thing we say to about sheikh muhammad i mean there's nothing we can say to 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 maybe give solace to some of that except to the idea of that we're passing on his legacy by teaching what he taught us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and gather us with al habib alayhi salatu wassalam and his family and the righteous and our teachers and our and our families and allow us to really be nation builders like him one nation builder passed but i hope thousands inshallah if not millions uh were raised on those the shoulders of those of that giant wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alhamdulillah shaykh hasib alhamdulillah um you know and i mean to those who are thousands of nation builders inshallah and all of you who are present you know make that intention um that you will continue and you will give your excuses that black guy alhamdulillah um next we have sheikh abdul bari yahya alhamdulillah we're so happy to have him on he's been with al mafay for many years and has had a you know beautiful relationship with sheikh mohammed jazakallah khair sheikh abdul bari for being with us um alhamdulillah i'll hand it over to you when you hear you know see sheikh mohammed through your eyes Jazakallah khair for putting uh, all this together. Uh, for the last few um, days, I, I'm pretty much at a loss for words, but I, uh, I, I'm one of the, I think I am the last speaker. But So I wanted to start from the beginning when I first um, met Sheikh Mohammed. He was uh, he was sitting behind me. And he tapped my shoulders. And this was the break between the classes. And he said, Abdul Zari, how would you like to work for me? I said, what are you talking about? I said, who are you? What are you talking about? I barely knew him. It's like he's trying to, he's trying to um, ask me if he, I would like to work for him. Like he's a student. He just got to. He just arrived in Medina, um, just like myself. Like, and uh, then he mentioned, he said, you know, there are a lot of people out there in the West that don't that don't have access, don't have the time, to seek knowledge. They can't come over to Medina like us. I mean. We've been blessed to be able to come here. But there are millions and millions of others that are studying. They're busy with college, with work. How can we reach those people? I want to start, um, I think he mentioned an evening class. That was the start, evening class to provide, to, to just give an opportunity for those who have busy lives take away from their regular schedule to devote themselves to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I looked at him and I said, whatever, you know, like whatever. So from the very beginning, subhanAllah, he was taking notes and I know that the notes that he was taking, it wasn't something, it wasn't, they weren't notes about the class or, you know, the Arabic class that we were in at that time. He was planning. He was so far ahead. He was so far ahead. He was always thinking. And he was already thinking about, okay, where can I find teachers? <laughs> and subhanAllah, we're barely learning Arabic. And he's trying to recruit, trying to start al Maghrib Institute already. Uh, he, was, he was an amazing person. He always made you, he always inspired you to be the best ver- version of yourself. Sometimes he would rub you the wrong way. It was because you were on the wrong way most of the time. That's why. 
and you wrote many people the wrong way. Maybe maybe they felt, but the, you know, people are sometimes uh, you know when you when you're a visionary, you bring change, and you and you're you're trying to help others. And uh, anytime you come up with something different, something unique, you're always going to have people who object to it. But he believed. And he made dua, it shows the power of dua. You, you would always see him raising his hands, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Um, you, and if not, you could see that he was always thinking, he was always planning. He was someone that tried not just to not just to try to change, change just maybe a, a small community or a group of people, but he wanted to benefit as many people as he could. And one of the lessons, uh, one of the things that I learned from him is to always make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put you in a place that you can benefit the most people so that you can leave a legacy for yourself. And it's befitting that Sheikh Hasib mentioned earlier that about his passing away in Medina. And it's befitting because he at Dubai, no, Dubai his passing away in Dubai. Dubai is, <laughs> is is where the East and the West right now in modern in the modern world it's where the East and the West meets. And uh, in cl in class in Medina he. You know, there were really, there are a lot of good teachers and they had a lot of knowledge. But he was thinking, you know, we need, to, we need to do something to try to help these teachers to also be the best that they can be. They have a lot of knowledge, but maybe, you know, that the method that they were using, maybe it wasn't the best method, he thought. Um, and he was thinking, uh, he was, he wasn't just, you know, he was, he was always, like I mentioned, many years ahead of us, uh, always thinking ahead. And you'd always, uh, he, I think many, many people um, before me have spoken that he would always make you feel comfortable. You were always comfortable with it. Uh, he always made you feel like you were his best friend. Um, and everybody felt that way. Just like, this is how the, the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. And that's why when you lose a giant like that, someone who's so influential, the Ummah has lost a giant. But, you know, he's, alhamdulillah, he's left so much. And I feel like, you know, our actions and, and everything that we do is a, is a continuation of, of his work in it. It inspires us, motivates us to do even more. Uh, one thing that he was able to do that even now seems almost impossible is to bring all of these duads, scholars. Um, Alhamdulillah, you know, the scholars are, uh, so, you know, there are so many amazing scholars uh, all over the place. But it's hard to bring people together, it's especially even in our community, even in the United States of America. It's hard to unite people and to bring people together. But through our Maghrib, he was able to bring the scholars together. These were people who, you know, they, they were in, in places where they, of course, are very, very respected and so forth. And it's hard to bring and unite so many people that have so much influence. And alhamdulillah, he was able to do that to help, to, to, to make everyone the best version of themselves. And, uh, and he, all I can say is, you know, if you just continue to make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises his status amongst the pious and the righteous in the hereafter and enter him the highest level in paradise. And 
to continue to to be inspired by uh, by what he did, but at the same time um, to 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 always give it your all to be the best to do the best that you can um, to be the best that you can be every single day to improve yourself. Uh, I think everyone who met him uh, met him and talked to him and learned from him. They became a better person. They became a better person and they became a better version of themselves. And that's the type of person that he was. He, he was genuine, he was sincere. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept all the deeds. And I really, I, there's so many stories, there's so many things that I can also say. Um, five, of course, five minutes is not enough, but um, mm -hmm. I just leave it at that. And I think um, I will continue to speak about him also, though. Mm -hmm. Those are both to me because he was such an inspiration for me. Uh, and I'm sure for the Ummah also. Mm -hmm. He made, it, made a big difference in my life and the lives of so many people who are very influential. Mm -hmm. We ask Allah to accept that. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Abdul Bari Yahya. And Alhamdulillah, you know, even for all the students, I think it's a beautiful message. Continue speaking about Shaykh Muhammad, the impact he had on you. Um, you know, that's such a beautiful, important part of grieving and allows you to connect and reflect on the lessons that you all have. So Jazakallah khair for sharing with us and being here with us, Alhamdulillah. Um, we have Shaykh Muhammad Faki also on with us who wants to share a few words. And Alhamdulillah, we were able to get you all get you on. Shaykh Muhammad, welcome. Um, and inshallah, you know, we're looking forward to hearing a few words from you as well. Oh, we can't hear you, Shaykh. Um, We've had, there's been few sound issues today. It seems like when people first join, there's no sound. Are you able to check your settings? If not, are you able to hear me? Yeah. Um, so if your sound's not working, um, try leaving the session, hopping back on. That seems to have been working, but um, just double check your settings. If maybe the mic, if you have anything else plugged in. Okay, I'll just wait till we get some sound. If you just check your audio settings. So we'll just wait, uh, inshallah, till Sheikh Mohammed can just get his audio settings. Um, but alhamdulillah, many of you sharing that you learned how to make dua from Sheikh Mohammed Al Sharif. And for those of you that never got to experience visionary, take visionary, and you're wondering, you know, what do you mean? You learn how to make dua. It, it wasn't about going through the motions of dua, but really understanding what the power of dua and what your life can look like when you connect with the power of dua. So alhamdulillah. Yeah. Sam. There we go. Alhamdulillah. Go ahead, Sheikh Muhammad. Uh, yes. Thank you, Sister Razia, for having me and for putting this webinar together. My name is Muhammad Faqih. My alias is Muhammad Ibn Faqih, the way it's spelled. Um, and that was Sheikh Muhammad Al Sharif's uh, recommendation. May Allah have mercy on him. SubhanAllah, I'm, uh, I'm still, whenever I mention his name, uh, and it has happened several times over the past few days, that I would still say, like, Hafizullah. And then I have to remind myself that now we say, Rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy on all of us. Um, but uh, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalamu ala Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First of all, my condolences to the entire global, um, you know, Muslim community, be it affiliated with Maghrib, if you're affiliated with the Maghrib Institute or not. Uh, because I think Sheikh Muhammad's influence went beyond the Al Maghrib family or uh, people who are affiliated with the Maghrib. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. Um, and I wanted to uh, start where Sheikh Abdul Bari, the person before me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him, left off. And Sheikh Abdul Bari, uh, the person that introduced me to Sheikh Abdul Bari was Sheikh Muhammad Sharif. Um, uh, about in 2005, late um, 2005 or mid 2005, Sheikh Muhammad Sharif came 
to um, my business that I was running. It's a family business. And he looked around, he came, and then he told me, why don't you leave this and join me? I was like, you? <laughs> Sheikh Muhammad, then SubhanAllah, those who uh, knew Sheikh Muhammad closely, you all know that he spoke big, but he also acted big. He dreamt big, he was big. And SubhanAllah, his departure uh, was big. And I asked Allah Azza wa Jal to admit him to a place that is as vast as the heavens and the earth uh, in the highest. Um, so Sheikh Muhammad convinced me to join him. And when I asked him who has on his team, and I had the night before welcomed him and Sheikh Yasir Brijas, he told me Yasir Brijas uh, along with Sheikh Abdul Bari. So Sheikh Abdul Bari was the third person to join the team. Um, and then I was the fourth person later that year uh, Sheikh Yasser Qadi joined us. So, uh, and the five of us had the first meeting uh, later that year uh, in, in the city that I ended up moving to, in the city of Memphis, where we set up the first Al Maghrib curriculum. A lot of people don't know this part of the history. But during that time, um, you know, and I had known Sheikh Muhammad briefly before that, two years. So it's altogether 20 years. And when you are around someone for that long, uh, you're, it's no longer an impression. Your opinion of them is not an impression because you can see a pattern. Or, you know, and when you spend time with someone, you travel with someone, you uh, room with someone, and you um, spend time doing uh, different types of activities, you know, professional activities um, in your own profession, leisure, acts of worship. Sheikh Muhammad was my roommate uh, in in Hajj, uh, I think 2007 or something like that. Um, him and I, along with our dear brother, may Allah have mercy on him, uh, Mustafa Khalifa, um, one of the former emirs of Al Maghrib, and you know. Um, we, we were together. So when you're with someone for that long and you see them in different settings, you do different activities with them, your opinion of them is not one of just um, like a very superficial impression. It's rather um, something that comes out of a deep connection and an observation over a long period of time. And there isn't really, um, we don't have enough time to really tell you everything that um, I, I know about Sheikh Muhammad and why this man was one of the greatest people of our time. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. Uh, when you look at the amount of people who are mourning his departure and his death, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. And when you look at what is being said about him, we cannot all just be reacting to this. You know, it has been three days and many of us are not over it. And um, many of us are not gonna be over it for a long time. I don't wanna be over it if, if um, if you want me to tell the truth, um, I want, just like his life was a sort of inspiration for me, I want his uh, death also to be a source of inspiration so that we could, uh, inshallah, Azza wa do our best uh, as he always wanted, uh, wanted us. He always demanded the best of himself and he demanded the best of everyone around him. And one of the greatest qualities that he had is the fact that he was very accommodating. Like he will, he will accept the best you have to offer, even if he knew that you have potential to do better. He will accept the, the, the best that you could do and help you excel or do do better if you are willing to give the time and put the effort. If not, then he would accept you as as you are. And this is why everyone who worked closely with him felt special, right? And this is actually a prophetic quality, right? The Sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, used to, and he actually learned that from a very um, influential um, um, mentor or, or or leader that used to possess this quality. He was also an old, you know, friend and mentor of mine as well. So one thing a lot of people don't know, Muhammad and I, our connection began, you know, began in the uh, you know, D.C. Maryland. Area, um, it was again very superficial connection, uh, but it didn't really solidify until he approached me in 2005, 
and asked me to join what he used to call the dream team. Um, and I joined it and I wish I had spent more time and I wish I had uh, put everything else on hold to fully dedicate myself to this. But there is that one unique story that maybe this is the, the place to, to share um, that, uh, you know, again, Sheikh Mohammed and I have a lot of special connections, or at least I have a lot of special connections with him. But one of his connections was um, when he took a walk in the city of Ottawa in a park. And a lot of you may have heard this story, but you don't know who the person uh, who was at the center of that story was, Sheikh Mohammed, I heard in many of his seminars, he, he talked about this particular person. So Sheikh Mohammed takes me on a walk and then I'm talking to him. And then he asked me, you know, um, as to why I, um, you know, I'm, I don't have children. My wife and I had been married for seven or eight years at that point. And I told him, I mean, it's the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're accepting it. He's like, are you making dua? I'm like, yeah, I'm making dua. He's like, are you making dua? The way you're supposed to make dua i'm like yeah you know we can i can always learn from you you tell me and he shared personal story with me and then he said you know why don't you just you know close your eyes and visualize and imagine uh the boy that you would want to have like the son that you would want to have and what he would look like and or the daughter and he made me imagine both and he was like um you know we went through this activity and he's like you know what now you make your dua, let's both make dua, we both made dua. And then later that day we uh, went for dinner and then he took me to a mall. And uh, in that mall, uh, he took me to a Gap's store. And he's like, why don't you buy something? I was like, yeah, I wanted to buy something for my wife. He's like, also for your children. I was like, I don't have children, Muhammad. He's like, you know what I mean, you know, buy something for a boy and a girl. I was like, okay, so I picked two things. And when I when it was time for me to pay for it, he insisted that he would pay. He held me, you know, we had a little, um, uh, we had a little fight right there physically. And then when he overpowered me and he, and he insisted, um, so I said, no, I'm not going to take uh, two sets. So it was two sets back in the days when uh, blue was for boys, pink was for girls, and it was totally okay. So I returned the pink one, which is something that I ended up regretting. And I said, I'm just gonna have, I'm just gonna take one. So I took one blue set with me. And when I went home and my wife saw it, it like, what is this? I said, you know, Hamid Sharif made me do this. She's like, you and your friend. I was like, khair inshallah, uh, subhanAllah. Two years later, um, my son Ahmed uh, wore that for his first Eid when he was one month old. Um, the only thing that, um, I wish I had done was to uh, have taken that second set, which was pink for my daughter, Maymuna. So not only did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me with one child, he actually blessed me with a twin. And what is uh, amazing and that maybe Sheikh Muhammad Sharif himself didn't know, both of them in terms of their physical appearance, they turned to be exactly the way I imagined them, right? Uh, so, so Alhamdulillah, I mean, uh, every time I, I, ever since, every time I see them and I look at them, uh, I remember Sheikh Muhammad and what we have done. So, and I'm sure there are you know, tons of people who will tell you stories like this, especially he, he touched many people in, 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 in his special way. Last thing I wanted to say, inshallah ta'ala, and I'll conclude, is that um, to me, uh, I, I want just like his life was a source of inspiration that his death to be also uh, a death of inspiration may he be in a better place um let's let's strive to be the best we can be as he always wanted uh wanted for us let's uh take his vision and his mission to the next level let's excel in our own personal personal lives and never forget uh our chief uh our beloved Muhammad al-Sharif, who inspired uh, all of us, and he was able to bring um, together, you know, a community, a community of people, made of people who are so special, with whom we all have, you know, 
great connections and 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 memories together that we owe to this to this very fine man. Last, last but not least, Muhammad lived his life of urgency, urgency. Um, and uh, it was a very purposeful life. Uh, he, I, I personally know that he used to hold himself accountable. Every day he would go over what he has done and, talk, and write down. He literally, like, he always pushed me to like, write down, you know, things that, you know, you, that you learn every day, at least thing. And he kept journals, and I'm sure that they're full of uh, gems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul. So, um, you know, um, so I'm hoping, inshallah ta'ala, that we can keep keep his legacy um, on and continue to pray for him and never forget it, forget uh, the things that he's done for us and other people. So may Allah have mercy on our beloved brother, friend, mentor, inspiration, leader, chief, beloved Muhammad al-Sharif. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Muhammad Saki. And that story is a visionary staple that many of the students have heard over the years. It's so beautiful to know that. SubhanAllah, that was your story. May Allah kind of bless you and your family. Jazakallah khair. Alhamdulillah. And inshallah, um, we have our final speaker, uh, someone who is very dear to Sheikh Muhammad and had a very, uh, alhamdulillah, special close relationship and a very big hand also in Al Maghrib, um, Sheikh Walid Basuni. And alhamdulillah, Sheikh Walid is going to share, inshallah, some reflections. He's also going to do a closing glass. So I really encourage everyone. Um, you know, bring others on, stay on for that, and we're going to have that with Sheikh Khalid. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh Khalid, for being here with us. Oh, Sheikh Khalid, I can't hear you. Uh, Sheikh Khalid, we can't hear you. Are you able to hear me? Are you able to? No, we can't. We still can't hear you. Um, maybe try leaving and rejoining, Shay. So let's, we'll just wait a second, inshallah, as Shaykh Walid um, tries rejoining. But alhamdulillah, uh, you know, those of you that have been sharing in the chat, I've been reading some of your comments and, you know, connecting with the stories. Um, alhamdulillah, you know, so many of the instructors sharing certain stories and you're like, I remember Sheikh mentioning that in a class or in a session and, you know, kind of gives you, alhamdulillah, that personal touch and that behind the scenes of what was going on. And he, you know, he was, it, it didn't matter where you were at, if you were an instructor, if you were just a student, you were just kind of passing by. He, um, you know, subhanAllah, he never failed to inspire you in some way or another, alhamdulillah. You're... Are you there, Shay? Okay, uh, we still can't hear you. No, not. Um, do you, okay, we'll just wait a second, inshallah. Uh, as Shaykh Walid sets that sound up. Alhamdulillah. Um, you know, one of the other things that when we're talking about inspiration, I know a lot of you have been asking, you know, what happens now with um, some of the projects, obviously the organizations, institutions that Shaykh Mohammed set up. I really want to reassure you that um, his legacy continues. Alhamdulillah, the way that Sheikh Mohammed had set up his organizations, had set up the work that he very much, the vision he had for them was not dependent on him. And that was a testament to Mashallah, his leadership and his vision for things. And so his work and his legacy very much continues. Um, so, you know, please take that as a, as a comfort, as a reassurance that Alhamdulillah, you'll see, um, you know, his energy, his inspiration throughout uh, the things as we move forward, be it with Al Maghrib, with Discover You, Alhamdulillah, we're blessed that he he was that visionary leader who set that up, and you know things don't fall apart um, because of it. And for those of you that took Nishro, you know what what I'm talking about. You know, Mashallah, he really preached that. He taught that to other students as well. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah khair. And um, you know, in the coming days, as you're still going through that grief process, I'd really encourage you continue channeling that through dua right continue channeling that channeling that by reading fatiha for him inshallah um take those moments to connect with other students you know that you had in programs and the classes you took together utilize that community because that's what was incredible with Sheikh muhammad um mashallah he, he always made sure that the community was part of the work that we did but you know part of any class any program we had community was an integral part. He understood, alhamdulillah, 
um, our dean, you know, incorporates that Jama, and so he would, mashallah, make sure that that, that was, you know, there for students to facilitate for us to be able to have those opportunities to connect students. And so I really encourage you. I know a lot of you, mashallah, have been speaking to one another. Um, alhamdulillah, being you know that means of comfort for one another. So continue doing that, and you know that's really a beautiful place. And again, we've created that Facebook group um, that honors his legacy and is an opportunity for students who came were impacted by his work in any way to come join. Inshallah, you know, share your reminders. We've got a beautiful post there that was shared today. Of you know, share your favorite quote, like your that you know something you hold on to um, of the impact of Sheikh Mohammed's work. And so, alhamdulillah that is something i'd encourage you to join in it's a really beautiful way to again have that collective grief as well um alhamdulillah and people who even said that you know i never took his class i followed him on social media and just through that like i loved his energy i loved his hope a lot of you saying that you know he wasn't uh, what you imagined as that traditional shay he, he was known for his smile his lightheartedness um his you know blunt humor at times alhamdulillah and i think that that's what was really special Alhamdulillah. There we are. Can you can can you no, hear me? We can't shake. Oh, not we yet. have sound. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Uh, no, no, we do. We have sound. Oh. Oh. Can you hear me? Uh, we can, but actually, just as you took the earpods off, we had sound. I'm. Okay, so now you can hear me. Yes, I can. Okay. Oh. Okay. Alhamdulillah. All right, go ahead, Sheikh Walid. I'll hand it to you. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, yarfa illahu al-lina utu al-ilma darajat. Allah will elevate our faithful and raise those who knowledge. Uh, uh, he will elevate the means in Jannah, in Dunya, in this uh, as well. And Allah is all aware of what you do. There is so many things He is aware of what we know others aware of. And Allah has for the person in the Akhirah away the Dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make and anything that we expect or we and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that uh, among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise their level as he is raising their level on the dunya. Don't uh, do they not we gradually re from its borders, which is this is being brought up. It's actually because how the earth shrink actions happen. He said, the the jurors, the folk. Say, Khalid, sorry, and, yeah. the, the sound is really, um, the, if the connection's weak, it keeps breaking up. I just want to, because we really want to um, hear you fully. Let me, let me sound or the connection? So it's, I feel like the connection might be okay. I'm not sure it's a sound because it's choppy. So I'm not sure if that's the connection or if it's just okay. your sound. I have an idea. Yeah, the connection seems okay. fine. So it might just be the. Okay. Let me use just uh, one. And, and Shaykh, like when Sheikh, you took your Sheikh earpods Majid, out, Chef Majid, Sheikh Muhammad said, "Have a backup plan B." Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I do have a plan. Once I told Sheikh Muhammad, I, I don't blab, uh, and he was like, looked at me, and I said, "Because the B is more than B." Uh, can you hear me now? Let's do it. Can you hear me? I can. Can you just count to five? I want to make sure. One, one two, three. Test one, two, three. Is it, is it clear? Is it better? It, 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 breaks, it breaks up like a little bit as you're speaking.
speaking. Can we try again? Just no. count to 10. One, two, three, seven. <laughs> I will choose, uh, let me try my laptop. If laptop will be better than uh, okay. cell phone. Okay, Shay. Because we, we want to hear you fully and clearly, inshallah, and especially because Shay Fodi is going to do the closing dot. So we really don't want to miss that out. I know I, I was trying to tell him about the ear pods, you guys, but I, I'm not sure if I, I was accurate. So um, let's see. Inshallah, he will join in a couple of minutes and um, he'll get that set up. He's got his backup plan, alhamdulillah. Um, as he said, you know, Shaykh Muhammad would always say have a backup plan. I remember, uh, you know, subhanAllah, you guys, we were actually talking about this as a team yesterday. Just, you know, the, the memories, the small moments that just kind of come up for us right now. And um, this past year, we had a, we had a technical glitch that um, I guess happened on one of our programs. And so, um, you know, some of the students, like they, they ended up, you know, missing some part of it because of the connection. And Sheikh Mohammed felt so bad. Um, and he just like, he, he wouldn't settle, right? Even though they still got to join the program and benefit, um, they still wouldn't settle or he wouldn't settle. And so he was like, okay, guys, we're going to do a second session later today. And it was going to be like, I think, 6 a.m. in the morning for him. He had just, you know, done the session, but he's like, I want to make up for, you know, the issue that happened. Let's set it up. We're going to do a second session. It didn't matter that it was like Ramadan at 6 a.m. for him. He was going to do it a few hours later um, because he just like, it was, he, he took so seriously the amana, the trust that students put in him. And I hope you guys felt that in, in the programs and the classes, because you know, mashallah, when you talk about Ihsan, like and behind the scenes, like so, certain things that you'd be like, really, Shaykh, like I think it's okay. You know, students weren't complaining, they were happy. And it was like, no, it's like we have to, you know, serve them. And I thought, like, you know, subhanAllah, as a team, it just it wasn't him just saying it and like maybe, you know, expecting you to run something like he mashallah really elevated the standard of what it was and you know, expected us to rise to that. And I think that was just so beautiful, like given um, what, where he was at. And the other part that um, earlier, I think the first person actually, Sheikh Yasser Ghali, was when he was mentioning about books, um, Sheikh Mohammed never stopped growing. Like he was, mashallah, at a point, um, you know, where what he had established and at his age, like he, he, you know, he could have walked away if he wanted, but he never stopped investing in his growth with Allah subhanahu ta'ala, you know, regularly revising, mashallah, we know he was a hafiz, um, regularly advising the Quran, always, you know, raising again the bar for himself. Many of you who took Dreamwalker know that, mashallah, in the last few years, he established regularly the habit of, you know, being um, in the masjid for, for Jama. And uh, inshallah, if you got a chance to watch that video with Sheikh Abu Isa, um, you know, the final place that Sheikh Muhammad was, was actually, you know, in the prayer room with his children, you know, about to pray um, when he, subhanAllah, suffered from his heart attack and so you know he always just had had this commitment to his growth and he was never above learning that was the other beautiful part um many times you know if you said something or you recommended something he would kind of probe and ask about that and that was just so beautiful as well um so you know when you're on here just take take that step back and ask yourself like maybe have i accepted certain status quo or if i kind of thought well that ship has sailed for me um because you know alhamdulillah like he, he we're, we're here as a testament to Marshall, the commitment he had to himself, his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his commitment to constantly um, you know, live in trying to be that best version of himself. And you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him and fill his grave with light. And so I, I hope that you guys are connecting with that as well. Um, that you know, he was a he was a man that didn't stop learning at any age. He was um, he had a program called Book Hero, where mashallah he introduced us to the power of audiobooks and then also the art of it, um, which was incredible as well, mashallah. And also, um, you know, his recommendations of books, he, he, I'm actually now just realizing that I'm not going to get any more recommendations from him on books. I would always be like, Shaykh, what are you reading now? You know, what's the next one? And I would send him some of my recommendations and um, I'm, I'm going to miss that. And we're not going to get to pick his brain about that, subhanAllah. Um, alhamdulillah. And, you know, those of you that were part of that Book Hero program, that was really incredible as well, that he would be regularly wanting to just share like that. I think that was what was beautiful, too, is when he learned something or he mastered something, he couldn't wait to, you know, put together a program and help others get on that. So when he, Mashallah, started his audiobook journey and really connected 
um, you know, with like, wow, I can get through, you know, 100 books in a year, which is what he had done, mashallah. He was like, we got to have a program. He's like, I want others to have that um, access to knowledge to be able to recognize that, you know, oral tradition is actually part of ours. And so he, he developed that program. So that was what was beautiful. A lot of the um, workshops, the classes, you know, the programs he did came from him mastering it, being so passionate about it and wanting others to succeed in it. So, you know, Dream Walker was one of his programs around habit building. And so much like he had had this you know, very successful formula in the way he started going about um, his habits and really changing, you know, incredible shifts in his life in the last five, six years when it came to just like the day to day. And so he wanted to, um, you know, he wanted to teach that to everyone else. He wanted to make sure that others can benefit from it. And so that was so incredible because again, sometimes people collect that knowledge and it is benefiting them. But like I said yesterday, and I'll keep reiterating, reiterating it. He was in the business of investing in people, right? He was in the business of helping people grow. Um, and there's such a testament, alhamdulillah, you know, I, 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 we could probably have sessions for the you know, rest of the month, if not years um, with Mashla. And I hope we do. We'll get to hear from all of you in that Facebook group um, and doing Facebook lives and, and expressing that as well. Um, one of the things that I know I, I cherish and I'm probably going to go back and just watch some of those recordings was when Sheikh Mohammed would recite Quran. So Sheikh Yahya has been sharing some videos. But some in some of the classes, um, mashallah, when Sheikh Muhammad would recite Quran, and you know, he had such a beautiful heart. There was never a class where he didn't cry. He he had such a soft heart, and whenever he would speak about you know some component of the Sita, some component or ayah of the Quran, he never held back from crying and being vulnerable. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Waalaikum assalam. You're back. Alhamdulillah. So Sheikh Mohammed would always make me make him count down one to ten. So you know, so I want to make sure we get this. One, down. two, three, three, four, nine, ten. Sheikh will get the end on me, but okay, I think we're good. Hang on, Sheikh. Is your your sound not coming. Chopping. Is it? Well, is not clear. Yeah, because I could see your mouth moving and there was no sound. So that's. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's, what's what's going on in Houston, Shafe? What's up with the connection? No. So I'm not hearing anything right now. But inshallah, we are going to, we're going to figure this out, guys, because I have been really looking forward to that closing dua um, of Sheikh Wadi. So, you know, I'm, I'm here. We are not going anywhere. We're going to make this work, inshallah. We want to have that beautiful collective uh, du'a with Sheikh Wadid, inshallah. And um, it's, he's probably got a backup plan for his backup plan. So, uh, you know, Sheikh Wadid, mashallah, is also a man of Hassan, and he does not play around. Yes, Syrah. Um, you know, Sheikh Amar, you're going to hop on. Just help Sheikh Wadid get that set up and figured out. Give him, actually, I don't think. Assalamu alaikum. There we go. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm going to mute my face because there's back on me. Okay. Just if you cannot hear me while you're muting. Okay. Is it good? Come up. Okay. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa um, I was saying that uh, Ibn Abbas عنه, said that the reduction you commented in the verse in Surah Al-Ra'd, it means the losses of scholars, uh, jurists, people among us, is the death of the scholars. Uh, when you see people crying, uh, um, don't be surprised. It's the love in Nabi, his friends when he lost them. And in one of the narration of Uthman ibn Mad'un, when he died, like rain, like the fall of the rain, uh, over the death of his friends when he prayed 
waves sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam not only that we weep for the lost and loved one and the scholars and the people who know that they benefit others that Allah Quran fama bakat alayhim as-sama' wa al-ard that the earth and over them then mujahid um he said he was asked earth and 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 sky cry what what it means they did not cry he, he said ma ma ta mu'min when a believer a good muslim a good believer and the sky will cry, cry over the death of that person that the earth will cry because you know this, this is a person who used to walk on me who used to do all this good things not there anymore and the heavens will cry because it says the record of those things that you have done used to go through me every day every night and now it's not going through death so it is not only that we we cry over the death of people who wants that uh, 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 even as you heard, heard what Ibn Abbas as well. You know, um, I love Ayyub Sukhtiani. And one of the things I love with this great scholars among the Tabi'in or among the uh, um, uh, followers, uh, Ayyub Sukhtiani, rahimahullah, he said, Inni ukhbaru bi mawti rajul. He told about somebody from Ahl Sunnah who passed away. I feel like I lost lost part of me, how it feels when you know, know someone who is upon khair, upon sunnah, upon goodness, that if you lost part of your, of your one of your limbs, and can you, Yahya bin Jafit up to me, I would give from my own life, like if I live a hundred years or six, give some of my life for Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari. I will donate my life to his, if that's possible. Why? Because the death of Muhammad al-Bukhari will affect the life of this person, will benefit so many more than me. And radiallahu anhu rahimah was so in, in tears, crying, Umar radiallahu anhu died. And he was asked, why are you, die, why are you crying so, so much like, I'm like, I'm crying over the death of Umar radiallahu anhu wa arda. But the death of Umar was crying so much to the extent that said his tears neither of his of him wet you know and he said Umar was like a castle protection the wall that protected Islam whoever entered this wall is protected not protected uh, uh, we as we weep and we cry death of Muhammad and other great scholars and, and da'iyas and student of knowledge and great influence on our good influence on our community we should always understand that this is in one, one person the ummah of muhammad وسلم, the ulama is not one and that must spread good, goodness and the activists and good, good and the uh, people who spread goodness and give the ummah will never be lost by the death of someone if it would it would been lost after the, or Abu Bakr or Umar, but it didn't. Al Ummah is filled with great people. Alhamdulillah, the generation replacing one, one another. You know, it, it, many slaves by another scholars. When Abu Hanifa died, one hundred fifty. A Shafi was born one hundred fifty. Another, when he saw some of the companion crying over the rumor that Muhammad Sallallahu was killed, and what Anas ibn another said, he said. Don't cry, stand up and go fight. And the Prophet died upon. As we, yes, have tears today, but we tell ourselves and we'll continue in the path of this good man. Uh, uh, this Ummah will never die by the death of its great men or great women. Actually, it the death, I always believe the death is the for life it be, best way to value life is to think about death the value of, of its opposite which is uh, uh, that uh, the, the meaning of life. and we value life and the importance 
importance of life and the importance of contributing. I, looking at the, the death and talking today about the death of Muhammad, rahimahullah, Tayyub al-Sukhtiyani says, those who think that by, by the death of someone of the great scholars, the sunnah, it will die, they deserve what Allah says in Surah Tawbah. Yuriduna ayyuhahim wa ya'ba Allahu illa yutimma nurahu wa law kariha al-kafirun. They want, they distinguish Allah's light with their mouth, but Allah will only allow His be perfected, even uh, uh, to uh, uh, the you know, of the disbelievers. Muhammad Sharif. Muhammad Sharif, there is with you quickly about him, and it's been a long, you know, uh, 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 talk. I was moved so many times by every one of the speakers before me may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them one of the things that I, I I I can tell you that I benefit a lot from in in, in practice in, in in actions certain unique things that I want to share with you between ihsan and perfections I'm by nature a person who like to perfect perfections but I, I understand that there's a big difference between perfection and ihsan. much better not only because it's the words that you use in the Quran and Sunnah but the concept of ihsan is so different you moving and accomplishing and come and sometimes perfectionists hold you back and not more you know perfectionists always hold you back from taking risks while ihsan while doing that proper uh, 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 you know taking the proper the right calculation Al-Ihsan in Muhammad's life and the work that we work with him is one is specialties. You know, he loves to give every area. He loves to go for us to go learn. So for example, Ronnie, you know how many courses that we have to take. To take with the specialists from Harvard University, people who are specialized, for example, in casting. He won the team to take course and cast them, you know how to tell the story yeah you know and bring people and said hey let's go hire someone from California who knows how to tell a story a storyteller reading books about this about the most area he will said let's read this book and together and, and let's go over the the kind uh, having a focus group seeking advice from people specialized in different areas very uh, you know Unique, and that's what one of the meaning of ihsan. He ihsan it means your mouth. <laughs> what it is your mouth is? You know, he would never hold back to spend money that will create a professionalism, and it will elevate the level of. I remember one of the first flyers that we produced in Almaty. Do you know that they paid like five hundred dollars for the designer to be the the standard don't mind if that's worth it if it is if it means that you do things correct you should I remember when the Maghrib started you know it's not like these days when we when we try sure that we pay the instructor not like about money but when somebody do a service you know you know uh, 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 basically we couldn't keep it up with the with, with, with the rate that it's going on I still remember in the Beginning, we care about we don't look, look cheap when we book a flight. We want it reasonable. You know, this is things that every, every speaker has joined us. We used to complain I, before I reach my destination, my whole day gone just because the, they want to save twenty dollars. Well, a fifty hotel. How I personally many times have to check out from hotel that I was put on stations that it is with something. You know, I will never stay there. You know, do that. You know, asking a level of professionalism, not only us as in, as, as down to every, every single volunteer, the hospitality. You know, uh, uh, there is even a, a, a that culture transferred later on to many Muslim organizations that I see what we did 20 years ago, 15 years later, and eight years later, adopted and picked by other organizations. Oh, thinking about the smallest detail. The smallest detail he will think about it. Show how the ihsan and 
how, you know, it is one of the things that we used to do is just when before, before even you think about your course, you, you put a frame like this, throw an avatar of who, who are your students, you know, put a sticky uh, figure, a Somali sister, a Daisy kid, you know, an Arab uncle, you know, <laughs> and, uh, a mother, the child. Who, who are my clients? So when I design my materials, when I think about who are my audience are, this is very different than what people in their information. It never was like that. You know, professionalism, and I remember Muhammad when we, we talk about Al Maghrib, you know, we launched the course on Friday. Do he, by the way, guys, our competition on Friday are not the Friday help on the master conference and, and, and you know one of the most prestige conferences in America like ISNA conference or you know these days you know in, in that time uh, or uh, ICNA, these big organizations yet before us that's not he said this is not my competition my competition in high school and college not to go to the movie theater on Friday and to come to the class we aim so High that we competing with Hollywood to make sure that we, you know it's 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 a, it's a place where people will choose over going to the movie to compete with you know um, it's not just about doing it you, you see in Muhammad also very interesting things I learned the difference between work and Islamic work not as an entrepreneur rather it's it's like a business, and that's very to say, and, and something is stuck in my head, head all the time. Entrepreneurs is all about bottom line money, about money for us, how much money we save, we, we make. It's a it's, it's a non profit organization, you know, it goes to, to anyone's pocket, to his pocket, or uh, he benefits zero from it, or any one of us, you know. And I mean, as, as a profit, entrepreneur is all about how much you make. Business is so important. So so basically, it's even if we don't save that much money, but we benefited so many people, we are happy. And that's why when we run it as a business, we want something fragile. It will keep sustainability and stability and stability for the organization for generations to come. Running as a business, you have an accounting, and you are you hold yourself accountable for your actions CEO of a company or uh, and and we have that balance culture between both just think like entrepreneur it's about sucking and milking money from people regardless what you really get. but we don't have that culture we never turn down anyone because of the money we, we always say if a mother grow everybody grow with it you know, you know we never like that it's about a, the company grow but not the employee, not the one, especially in the lower level. We do, but we run it as a business. We don't do it in a way that, that tomorrow will be broke. That you see clearly his ability to, to, to balance and to differentiate between being in the same times and conservative and not, not being a strict or ultra conservative that it became a, 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 a hundredth. For the growth, let me talk about the issue of sisters, and I give this as an example. It's interesting, and I'm not you know, respecting the sisters. For example, we, we made the rule: you can't give your personal phone number to a sister. And the thing that you we tell the instructor the moment they start joining Al Maghrib. One of the things Muhammad used to say: questions. So make sure when they come, you tell them please be behind that. Don't come from the sides to me. Be behind the desk. There's no closeness like that. Don't pay attention to your private. They want to talk to you, and they will walk. <laughs> I remember literally he stood between you and her. It's still, there is etiquette that need to be followed. That thing that we, yes, we. I remember we attacked so badly in one of the country when we allowed room with no partitions. We believe Islamically that's acceptable, but in the same time. Drop the rules. No, we care so much about the hayat. We have a rule 
in the Maghrib that organization later on. Even I apply this in my own master, which is if anyone married any one of our students, immediately will be terminated. His contract or her contract. Oh, they're for looking for a second wife, well, a first wife, well, uh, ten wives, well, whatever it is. We don't do that. And you basically, you we we have very zero talent tolerance to culture but very interesting you know as much as muhammad is hip and al-maghrib are hip and stuff like that but look muhammad in the beginning he used to have with all the umara a group a group they call each others for salat al-fajr no matter where they, they they used to call each other and to making sure and he pair two together make sure he said if we don't pray fajr impact people and bring them to Islam. If we ourselves are not practicing in the masjid, you know, fasting, reading Quran, is a person he's about this. These never vanished just because he's also hip and model and cool. Muhammad also has this ability to be very in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sense that he brings new things. But he never was an innovative sense. Yani, that he is bringing new methods, new tools. But always he cares to make sure that it is halal. He call ya Sheikh Yasser Is this allowed? What is the Islamic rule? And if we tell him that's not allowed, he made ideas. I said it's nice, but it's not allowed. I believe it's bid'ah. He drop it. He into a loophole, or you know what? Uh, now, now, خلاص, let it go. There is another thing. He also for the what is right and what is halal, what is haram. Look how some of his project, the Maghrib in itself, to travel to give knowledge to people where they are. This is a very new. You know, not only that to choose from the ilm what's suitable for people. Really, it's not our goal. Never was to bring to make. A sheikh out of al-Maghrib. The goal is to make a well-educated Muslim out of our class. A Muslim who loves his deen, proud of his religion, built a resilience and balance, you know, and stability in his life through knowledge. It's very unique. I can tell you, I taught in Muslim countries. I taught, I was offered to a university where he graduated from. I turned it down and I said to the, to the, to the one who invited, preferred to teach in the Maghrib. I see more clarity and more impact and more benefit in Medina. Also, I believe there's better teacher in Medina than me to teach the student in Medina. Even the words that he choose, the khutbah, the khutbah, but the khutbah that he, A, B, C, you know, the, the, the khutbah standard that he put and copied by thousands of people. And instead of just teaching people, you know, workshop, he put it on it. A dua, the, the concept that he focused on in the last few years of his life. There's so many new ideas of it. Even a dua is a very, very well topic. But still, he had a room to introduce new ideas to it. All line of sunnah and bid'ah. And I think one of the things that protected him, that he always survived more maybe information than him, knowledge than him, I don't want to say that word, it's kind of hard, hard from very heavy, you know, people he, he can, they can put him in his place, check with them, it would, you know, to be around someone like Abu Isa, someone like Wahid Bishyuni, he will give it to you in your face, the way he did, you know, and he loved that, because he needed that, that in order growing and being able to invent new ways, new New methods without going into the air. Also, one thing I love about Muhammad, since they talk about this new techniques for marketing, sales, and all, all these areas, and and making it and and see all these areas, he bring it and he made it. Okay, management as, as a servant for knowledge. You know what? So many du'a do. They got it wrong. About technique for sales and management and NLPs and all this kind of stuff. Muhammad made these tools to 
serve knowledge, while so many others made knowledge rules. So they, they will come to a management principle, then they will be to serve that management principle or sales like that. Muhammad believed in Sharia as the, the ultimate highest authority and power. Whatever tools and knowledge that exist outside to, to serve these goals. That's a big difference. I think that's something very unique about him. Also, like, and I'm saying this is not about him, it's about us. So benefit, to copy this based on your ability whoever listening to me tonight or today ben, ben, you know Muhammad has no hizbiyya has no hidden agenda he doesn't belong to any group or cult or, or, or ideologies the only thing that he belongs to is the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah and, and, and very clear about that you know but your face and, and, and all going out there to have a debate over over single issues no it's not belong to any one of these groups or or, or ideas or or ahzab or one of in the field or anything like that that's why when he when we Maghrib comes to any city with part of any particular da'wah group or associate with ourselves with a particular da'wah we see ourselves as an educator we're not coming to compete in the da'wah field with respect everybody and and we'll give advice to everybody. We will we will work with anyone who that we believe it's correct, and we excuse ourselves from the area that we don't agree with. And I love something about you, Muhammad, rahimahullah. And this is from inside of the Maghrib, as the leader of the Maghrib, to show you how clear, clear how the clarity of Muhammad. He he. He told he told me or the shura or the board of al Maghrib. He said, "Well, we have a culture in in the meeting. It's called lobbying. So, for example, if I have an idea I want to introduce to al Maghrib, I'll go and to Sheikh Yasser just in the night, talk to him in the phone about it, and make sure that he's with the meeting. I have Sheikh Yasser we are just vote and I secure the nur to you know to have come like that." We Is just are you, are you able to hear him? I can't. So, sorry, so, sorry, Shaykhwin is popping really badly. Popping and I want to let it continue. And okay. Let it oh, uh, 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 gonna, uh, if you can't hear me, there's gonna, no point. Uh, no, well, I wanted to, I wanted to, I'm going to call you on WhatsApp. We're going to do the demand for, for that. Where to start from? So. So can I call? Uh, I'm all gonna call him. Uh, yeah. Sorry, you guys. Give me a second. I know we we're trying to bear with it. Um, I didn't want to interrupt him. I thought maybe, just maybe, it would get better. Give me a second. So you guys, we have a backup plan for our backup plan, alhamdulillah. So I'm going to hold up uh, the phone. Sheikh Walid is with me here on video, and he's going to do the dua. And you guys can see him. Here we go, Sheikh. You're on, alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, before just making the dua, I, I want to conclude with what I was saying earlier. Um, I, I want you to know this. Even Muhammad Sheikh, it was said, and he's a very introverted person. But yet he, he pushed himself to be a team player, to, to be a teacher, always smiling, uh, talking to people. 
Muhammad Sharif loved food, by the way. And he used to respect food, not only love food, he respect food. And that's something I, I, I like about him. You know, I remember he at one time he said, I'm not going to eat meat. I'm just going to eat uh, vegetarian. But obviously, he couldn't hold it up for a long. Uh, he gave up quickly. Um, <laughs> vacations means a lot to him. He used to go out a lot, be by himself or with people, calling people to travel with. It, it means a lot for him to spend a good time, you know, and to travel new areas, to try new things. Very adventurous person, uh, Rahimahullah. Put some time for himself alone with friends and family as well. Uh, uh, Sheikh Yusuf said earlier about his wife. He told me several times, my wife is my anchor in my life. No matter how it goes, she always brings me back. You know, so, so that's something very uh, interesting. Have very high self-esteem. Trust himself so much. Uh, and, and that's why oh, there is always conflict. And he's a big dreamer. And that's why, if you ever wonder, if there's two people or people like uh, clash kind of uh, and, and challenge each other will be Muhammad Sharif and Abu Isa. You know, then comes me and Yasal Qadi sometimes. You know, why? Because uh, we also have a lot of high self esteem. <laughs> we like our opinion a little bit uh, 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 as well. So we kind of challenge each other all, all, uh, a lot of time. Also, he's a big dreamer. We're by nature. Me and Boi Sasha, yes, are very practical people. And, and I, I always did myself, with all the trouble that we give him, why he kept us, why he's always with us, because I know that he benefited from this as much as we benefited from it as well. He's a simple person, you know. Um, I, I will end with the, uh, uh, or before, uh, two points quickly, but I will end with this uh, uh, story. We were once in, a, in, a, in, a, in Canada, and it was extremely cold to show you how confident he is. <laughs> so it's extremely cold outside. And, and uh, he said, hey, let's finish this discussion in the jacuzzi, big jacuzzi outside. But it's kind of far from the house, so you have to walk to it. I said, Mohammed, you know, I live in Saudi Arabia, then I moved to Texas, so it's almost the same, I feel like home. But I don't know about you guys, this is minus 30, that's crazy. I'm not going to get into the water, then walk outside from the water with a wet clothes on me, you know, in minus 30. Uh, 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 I'm not Canadian. You know, uh, I'm not going to do that. He said, oh, Sheikh Ali, don't worry. When you get in, the temperature of your body will be so high. By the time you walk back to the house, it, it will not drop right away. So you will keep the warmth and will not feel the cold. I said, okay. We go, we finish our discussions, blah, blah, blah. Had a good time. And by the time I'm leaving, you know, I told him, so, mashallah, you, you have experience with that, and, and he, you know, you always guys do that. He said, no, this is my first time. <laughs> I said, excuse me. He said, that's my first time. I said, you just told me all this whole thing about body temperature stuff. He said, oh, that's my theory. I said, well, I, if that didn't work, <laughs> you're in big trouble tonight. <laughs> so, and, and we laugh about it, and he was correct, but the way the confidence that he has, I thought he's been doing this all the time, you know, it was said simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Muhammad doesn't have these like crazy complicated ideas. If you look at all his ideas are simple, but simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. You know? Yani, um, anyway, uh, there, there is a lot to be said, uh, Rahimahullah. Um, Muhammad, there's no doubt in my heart before that this acceptance that you see is a result of a lot of hidden things that nobody knows about. A good thing that he'd done, Allah only knows about it, and few people. And that's one of the secrets for Allah. In or if you have hidden things are so good, Allah make your appearance and your reputation so good in return. You did something away from people, Allah give you the reward of the opposite, make you so well, especially after your death. And as Sheikh Yasser Burjah telling us and Sheikh, you know, uh, Muhammad Faqih and many coming up with the stories, his father telling that he used to go in 30 minutes or 40 minutes before Adhan al-Fajr when it's minus 30, minus 20 and to shovel with the shovels to remove the snow from the entrance of the masjid so people can walk into the masjid. And nobody knows who did that. 
You know, these small things that you do in secret between you and Allah alone, the result of it is something tremendous in the dunya and in the akhirah. And we hear all these things coming up right now. Somebody traveling, Shah Muhammad Faqih. Yani, I, I'm not going to go into exact. There is another time we should spend more about these stories. But the point is, that's something you learn and something you should care for. With all been said, I don't want you to think of Muhammad as an ideal person. Muhammad has his faults, has shortcomings. I uh, rob people in the wrong in the wrong way sometimes. We disagree with each other, we agree with each other. I don't want you to be like thinking that he's like an ideal because if you think this way, you're gonna feel I can't be like him. You can be like him and better. And also if you think of somebody like perfect and you know about something that maybe it's not correct, you will be like either you will just ignore the you follow the mistakes or the whole person collapse just because you've seen one or two mistakes. We should be balanced. That's why I didn't like when someone, like it is Islamically, from a theological perspective, we should not. There's some statement been made about Muhammad in Jannah, Muhammad yani, in the, uh, uh, walking into the Jannah, the angels giving him the glad tidings of entering Jannah. That's wrong. That should not be said that. We should say, inshallah, that's what we wish. That I know some people might hear it the wrong way, but that's not the point. 100% I can guarantee you. The point is that what we hope for him, we wish for him that he will be like that. And in ulama rahimahullah, very clear about that you don't make a judgment for an, a certain individual by his name that he's in Jannah. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, just because Uthman ibn Mab'oon, when Umm al uh, she said, يعني, he is, uh, she made a comment about him that he is in paradise or something like good for him. He said, I, I don't know what will be done to me. If Muhammad said, say, I cannot say that's about me. Yes, antum shuhada'ullahi fi ardi. You are Allah's witness on earth. So when it's good, it's good. So would we say, you know, we are hoping and we expect nothing less than Jannah, inshallah, for someone that so many people testify for him that he's a righteous, good person. But always with that help, so we don't cross the line. It's it's important to keep that uh, uh, balance. Finally, when Muhammad told me to join Al Maghrib, I said, "Why?" He said, "Sheikh, I want to, I'm building something that it will bring edges to me while I'm in my grave, and I want the same for you." And I can tell you, Muhammad wants the same for everyone who listening to me now. Maghrib or, or, or any one of his projects. That was his main thing. You might hear Muhammad Sharif was not involved in Maghrib mm -hmm. in management. Now, by the way, Muhammad Sharif involved in Maghrib to the last day of his life, to the last week of his life. He's always there. He's always consulting. We always consult with him, talk to him. Our administrator always in contact. Never turn his back to the organization. He believed in the leadership of it, but he still was very much involved. And, and Muhammad, Allah, this is one of his dreams. That's why I say to everyone who's hearing me today, if you've been volunteering with the Maghrib, go back and volunteer. If you've been taking role, it doesn't mean to be the same role, another law, bigger role to play. Been supporting the Maghrib, continue to do that, because that's what his Sadaq Ajari, as Sheikh Ammar said, you know, Hey, make sure that is really the best thing that we can do to this person personally, besides also learning from his legacy, from his character, and carry that with us uh, uh, in our life. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Finally, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by his names and attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive Muhammad al Sharif and elevate his station among those who are guided. Send him along the path of those who came before and forgive us and him. Oh Allah, the good, the, 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 the Lord of the world. I ask you to enlarge for him his grave and shed light upon him in it. Oh Allah, forgive him and strengthen him. 
اغفر له وارحمه وعافه واعف عنه واكرم نزله او الله فورجيف هيم اند هاف ميرسي ابون هيم اكسكيوز هيم اند بيردن هيم او الله ميك اونوربل هيز ريسبشن اكسباند هيز انتري اند كلين هيم وذ واتر اند سنو اند ايس بيوريفاي هيم ذا سيم واي ذا غارمنت ذا وايت غارمنت از بيوريفايد فروم اني ستينز اور فول يا الله We ask you to admit him to the gardens, to the Firdaus al-A'la. Protect him from the punishment of the grave and the torment of the hellfire. Ya Allah, we ask you for Muhammad al-Sharif, that your servant and the son of your servants is to forgive him and his parents and to give strength to his parents and his family and to gather them with him and all of us in Jannat al-Na'im. O oh Allah, he is with you right now. So, Ya Allah, forgive whatever shortcoming that happened from him against you. And be his guarantor. Be the one who defend him. Be the one who will give back on his behalf for anyone that he have wronged in this dunya. Tahammal anha ma baynahu wa bayna nas wa aghfir lahu ma baynahu wa baynak ya hayy ya qayyum. Ya Allah, Muhammad now is under your mercy. So protect him. Take good care of him. Elevate his status. Shower him with, his, with your mercy. Ya Allah, he needs your mercy now more than ever. And your forgiveness now more than ever. Are you generosity more than ever? So forgive him. And Elevate his level in Jannat al-Na'im. Ya Allah, in the day of judgment, give him strength and tabat. And make his skills of good deeds heavy. And the skills of the bad deeds light. O Allah, protect him from hellfire that he enter Jannah without being touched by the hellfire. O Allah, we ask you, Ya Hayy, Ya Qayyum, to make his affairs from now on going easy and his path to Jannah easy, and to make it easy for us in this dunya, upon our death and upon our resurrection. O oh Allah, we ask you by your names and attributes to uh, uh, I mean, get uh, or shower him with your uh, 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 mercy, and do not torment him or, or punish him. And Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Hayy, Ya Qayyum, that you treat him according to your standards of mercy and love and forgiveness, not according to his deeds, as your mercy is way more bigger uh, than anything. Ya Allah, yammin kitaba, wa yassir hisaba, wa thaqil mizana, wa thabbit qadama, wa askinhu hiyana al-jannah, bi jwari nabiyika Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma arham, wa la tu'addib, ثبت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اجعله في ظل عرشك يوم يبعث الناس اللهم يا حي يا قيوم اللهم يا حي يا قيوم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام زده سرورا على سرور وبياضا في وجهه ونورا في قلبه وفي جو في قبره يا حي يا قيوم اكتبه في الصالحين والصديقين والشهداء اجعله عندك في منازل الصابرين وجهه جزاء الشاكرين اللهم يا حي يا قيوم لا تحرمنا أجره ولا تفتننا بعده يا الله do not prevent us from getting the reward of him and everything that he was involved in and we have the opportunity to be part of it and do not cause us to go astray after him اللهم يا حي يا قيوم again give your strength and your patience and mercy to his family, to his children make them righteous and gather them with us in Jannat al-Na'im. Sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alih wa sallallahu ala Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh Walid. Um, so alhamdulillah, that brings us to the conclusion of our program. Um, Jazakallah khair for being here with us, sharing these memories, um, and alhamdulillah, most importantly, taking part in the dua with us. And I said this earlier, and I want to reassure everyone again, the legacy that Sheikh Muhammad built 
Alhamdulillah, the institutions that he built, they continue. We continue, inshallah, stronger and honoring his legacy, the vision that he had, connecting people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that work will never stop. And so stay tuned, inshallah. Um, and we are going to honor him in the best ways possible and tread ahead. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all of you, give you patience and strength. You'll hear from all of us at Al-Maghrib and discover you very soon. Jazakallah khair, everyone. Assalamu alaikum.